everybody. What a 2023 we have had. And I could think of no better way to end it than to go ahead and have Podcast Assemble. Podcast Assemble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take it in. That's right. Take it in. <laughs> That's for all of you. Um, you know, so yeah, if you're watching this on video, then you already know. We got we got four people here. Uh, I guess some some introductions are in order. Uh, I'm going to start with you because we're right here in your studio. This is the. It, did you ever come up with the official? You uh, know, of course, it's the homie hangout hanger. Okay. Yeah. Well, right it's, here, it's a work in progress. Right here, from what he just said, <laughs> we have Ace from the Superhero Homies. What? What? We have Lauren from Coffee and Lore. Hey guys. And we have the Crochet Fairy herself, Kay. Hi. And then I am James Caleb Kitchens from Entertainment Evolved. And we are here. And we are going to talk about 2023 in review. Um, before we get started, though, uh, you know, we uh, we lost somebody today uh, early this morning, I think, or was it yesterday? It was yesterday, or technically yeah. Monday, and it was announced yesterday. Yeah, and uh, uh, Andre... Bauer. Bauer, is that Brower. how you say it? You know I'm terrible with last names, especially, for some reason. Um, yeah, so you probably, he's probably most well known from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, and he was what? 61. 61, yeah. yeah. So pretty young, you know. I was going to say, the older I get, the younger that sounds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so for a famous person who has the resources, right? Um, yeah, that's that's very young. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, they, they usually catch you by surprise and, you know. It always sucks to hear it, but man, yeah, that one really, that one really sucked. He had did, uh, I feel like he had what you could describe as a sleeper career. Like he's done so much, and all of it has been quality performances from him. For sure, yeah. And I mean, different genres. I mean, he started off really dramatic, you know, a, a really good dramatic actor, and then, you know, I mean, in the, in the later portion of his career, transitioned into just a, an excellent, like deadpan comedic performance. I was gonna say he had that great, like. What's the word I'm looking for? Delivery. Yeah. 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 I, I first saw him on Brooklyn Nine Nine, which I'm not like a huge fan of the show or anything. Like I like it, but I've never like sat down and, you know, watched it all the way through. But I like know a lot of people that like it, so it's just kind of been on and I've seen episodes and stuff. And yeah, I mean he was always like the standout favorite when I did watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I actually went back and uh, he was on a show called Homicide mm-hmm. for a while. Yeah. And uh, he was really good in that, but it like, uh, just seeing him in various things, yeah, it, if you got introduced to him as his Brooklyn Nine-Nine character, seeing him, like, play it straight was just crazy, you yeah. know? Yeah. So. It was a tough year for losses this year. Yeah. Like, a really yeah. hard one. Two of my favorite comedic actors died this year. Like, performances that I love and I'm passionate about, which would be Matthew Perry's Chandler Bing mm, yeah. and then Captain Holt. Like, those are two of my go-to comfort shows. Yeah. And it's kind of haunting, right? Because I'm, I'm not trying to jump the gun here. We can definitely circle back around to it. But, like, a question I wanted to ask everyone was, like, what are some of your comfort vices, like TV shows or movies or video games? And yeah, it's unfortunate that, you know, two of yours... Yeah, those were absolutely any time that I needed a comfort show on. If I was reading a book, if I was just laying there and wanting something on mm-hmm. while I was doing something else, or even just to, like, watch, those were two of my favorite characters. Yeah. To lose them both in, like, one year really <laughs> blows. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it is very tough. I mean, and they were kind of in the same, you know, kind of genre, too. Uh, kind of the, the TV, you know, comedic sitcom uh, but, yeah, I mean, uh, not to start it on a down note. <laughs> no kidding, <laughs> this, but I'm glad that you brought him up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so another interesting note here, and this is on an upswing, this is the eighth assembled we have done this year. Not this exact crew, but just in general. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That is. Yeah. That is really so, cool. Yay us. The uh, So the initial idea for Podcast Assembled, I thought I would share this little tale before we get into it. Um, it was... Um, this was like shortly after Avengers Endgame came out, and the uh, the cabin that Tony Stark lives in in Endgame was actually you can actually rent it out on Airbnb. Um, now, before everyone found out that that's the Avengers Endgame cabin, you could get it for like nine hundred bucks for like three nights, which is like the minimum you could rent it for. Right. But shortly after that, it went up to like thirty two hundred, 
And I was it, so my original idea is I was going to rent it out for three days, and we were going to go down there. It was going to be myself, Ace. It was going to be Joe from uh, Suplexes and Microphones, uh, and a guy named Heath Mulliken from the Double Dropkick Show. And we were going to go down there for like three days and just record like and go over the entire like Infinity Saga of the MCU. And it was just going to be like a ton of recording. Uh, that never came to fruition just because you know it became unreasonable. But uh, to go from it just being an idea to something that we've been able to do so many times this year and, like, people have really, you know, kind of latched onto it and they've been some of the most popular episodes and stuff, uh, I, you yeah, know, that's a win for me, so. No, absolutely. I think it's, it's always a good time whenever we get together and talk about anything pop culture. Yeah, and now we're, uh, now we're wrapping up 2023. So uh, we talked about... Um, you know, different, uh, like, categories for what we could talk about here tonight. So we got video games, uh, we got movies, uh, we got books, which is going to include both uh, graphic novels and your standard prose, um, and then TV shows. I didn't say that one yet, right? Right. It was a list of four. I had one job. <laughs> uh, so We didn't have any notes this time, so you don't have anything to look over. So. That's true. Well, you know, I, I wanted it to have kind of a <laughs> chill true. vibe, yeah. you know? So I... In the spirit of a chill vibe, I think I think we go to your thing. What's like the comfort stuff? Um, we can start with that, and then we can get into like specific categories after that. That came out of this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I think that's I think that's good. Like like, and maybe not even something that came out this year, but like as far as this year goes, what are some of the your comfort vices? Ooh, it, okay. it could be something that came out this year, but um, maybe not necessarily. One that I will say that is not from this year at all, but became super relevant this year. Uh, we're watching it right now is uh, Suits. Mm. Um, Suits is like a comfort show for me already, but, you know, it was it started airing in like 2008, and then I think it wrapped, uh, it's nine seasons, right? So it would have uh, wrapped around like 2017. It's definitely pre-pandemic. You hear that? Yeah, that that's one of my neighbors. Oh, okay, cool. I just making sure, just making sure, just making sure it wasn't in here. I, I mean, you know, he, he normally leaves at like five a.m., so you know that's that's great to deal with. But yeah. no, he is now. Yeah, yeah that's that's cool. I was just making sure yeah. it wasn't coming from in here. <laughs> yeah, I um, thought it was feedback too. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was like, like mm. what, what is that? Uh, but uh, yeah, so um, that is a show that like exploded on streaming this year, and more people have watched it this year than they did when it was actually on. Because it was on USA, right? Mm -hmm. And then it it, uh, it was on uh, Peacock forever and, like, wasn't that watch. And so they licensed it out to Netflix, and now everyone's watching. It's, like, the most streamed show on the planet, um, which is crazy to me. And now, of course, they're talking about doing a spinoff or, or you know, right. whatever. But uh, that is definitely a comfort show for me. I could – it's one of those – it's nine seasons. I literally could start it, watch it all the way through, and then just start back at episode one and watch it again. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still need to, uh, to give that a spin one of these days. It's very good. Yeah, that's what I hear. Very character driven. Yeah. I haven't seen that one, um, but a show that I did watch to fruition this year, and then they had a movie come out was The Last Kingdom. Ah, uh, um, I finished that. To watch that, it is phenomenal. You haven't seen um, the show at all, or you no, haven't no, seen the movie? Oh, and I the lead, the honey, the, the lead character is everything. You will be hitting next episode immediately. He's the plot. <laughs> he <laughs> is. The plot. Th there's a multitude of gentlemen who are the plot of this show. But um, and then what did come out this year though is their Seven Kings Must Die movie, and I have not seen that yet. Oh, but I've it's seen the rest so of it. good. Hmm. Because the final season of The Last Kingdom was not my favorite. It was probably my least it's favorite so out of everything. Ooh. And yeah. I was really not thrilled by that. But they really redeem themselves with this movie that takes place chronologically right after the last season. And, like, takes care of so many plot holes and so many things. And I am incredibly sad that I will never get... I mean, I don't know about never, but that I won't get more of that show. It, yeah, it's um, it was definitely a downer for me, and I think maybe one of the reasons I haven't watched the movie yet is because it's just like season one of that show. It, it looks like they made it for like two thousand dollars. Like, I mean, it's so low budget. They go to like the capital of like Britain or whatever at the time, mm -hmm. and I mean, there's like 
a little hut right here and a little hut here. You could tell like the set budget was like nothing. Right, right? cuz it's a BBC production. It's yeah. not oh, made okay. over here. Yeah, none of the actors are famous. Like there's nobody you're going to be like, "Oh, I know that." Like it's just no, it's just none of that. Mm-hmm. Amon Targaryen's in it. That's true. That is true. But I don't think he was really famous before no, that Amon he, role is kind of putting him on the map. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he wouldn't have been. Yeah, no. I still have to watch the second half. Of uh, that's another good House one from this year. Dragon. Yeah, once yeah. I did the, the the time jump and they uh, changed the actors, mm-hmm. I kind of was like, uh, so it got like I lost, I don't know, I lost the connection. The the yeah, so the the actress that plays the adult Rhaenyra is nowhere near as good to me as the younger actress. However, it she does not feel like Rhaenyra until the end, and like the last episode. She feels like her again, but you have to go through those several episodes where it's just like, why is this random person playing this character? They aren't, you know, that they just don't know how to play. So, but by the end of the season, though, it, it feels like the same character. But there, it, there is that, and the worst episode is that episode where they first Transition. do the swap. Yeah. yeah, see, I couldn't even get through the episode. I watched about half of it, and then I was like, oh, nope, not going to finish this. Which really sucks, because that's where they introduce Sir Harwin Strong's character. And he's one of my favorite characters in that kind of lore. But they don't do him justice. They don't give him enough time in this show. Um, there's so many things that they could go into that they they just haven't. That sucks. Yeah, but it's still a well-done show. I still really enjoy the show. It's funny that you brought up Game of Thrones because I was just about to be like, the last <laughs> Kingdom's final season reminds me of Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> like, it, not even in such a way of like, Game of Thrones season eight, I mean, obviously we could talk forever about how bad it is. I think we put out an episode at some point about Sounds how, right. just yeah. how bad that season, the whole episode. It was awful. It was yeah. just so awful. But if House of Dragons is redeeming Game of Thrones at all for you, that's what that movie does for The Last mm. Kingdom. I need to watch it. because You do. It's so good. But you got to catch up on at least your main characters if you yeah. haven't watched it in a while. Because it jumps right in. I've watched all, I, it. That show is so good to me that it's one of those where, like, when the new season is going to come out, I will start it over from the beginning and watch it it's in preparation. So, so I've seen it a bunch of times. Uh, I say that, and I'm... And I'm you know, forgetting a main character's name here. Utrecht uh, of Bevenbo. No, no, not not Utrecht. Oh. Uh, the 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 princess. Um, Elfwin, Elfin, Awen, something like that. It's uh, one of those British yeah, names. Yeah, that's from that's the, that's who I'm trying to remember. Um, but yeah, it is something along that line. But like the love interest, mm-hmm. um, she was probably my favorite character. And so the way that the, that everything happened with her in the last season. It it, it, it it hurt. But I love that they made you wait like four or five seasons for that love interest. Like he had his his little pieces on the side and then two wives and she went to the to the Norse camp for a while. And yeah. I actually really liked that um, plot with her yeah. um, where she was held captive and then the guy helped her. Anyways, it's an excellent show. If you have not watched The Last Kingdom, I highly recommend it. Have your fast forward button ready, Kay. Okay. Um, but it is a good, good plot show. The last season let me down really bad, but then the movie that they did to, to wrap everything up gives it a lot of redemption. Yeah. It's a great show. Yeah. And that came out in 2023. So, Let's yeah. See. What came out in 2023 that's a comfort show for me would be Ahsoka. Mm. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We haven't assembled on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we have two episodes on it. We have, you, you and I have an episode on my mm-hmm. show, and then we haven't assembled for the last half. Uh, for something that came out a while ago, but was a comfort for me for this year, um, was Rose Red. I, I still always love Rose Red. It's a mini series that Stephen King did uh, right at, in the 2000s, I think, maybe 99. Um, it was a, a straight to ABC type thing. It's Awful. And that's <laughs> one of the reasons I love it. <laughs> that's okay. Sometimes those are the best for yeah, a comfort yeah, show. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so bad. But I just, I love it. I, I especially love the second episode because it's a three part. Mm-hmm. So it's like six hours of awful. And it's just great. <laughs> the uh, the Sam Neill Merlin show is the same way for me. Like that was a straight to TV thing. And like that is my favorite version of Merlin ever. Like, still. I don't think I've seen that one. I'm trying to place all of the Merlin shows I've seen. Yeah, it's. Because I love that time. It's from like late 90s. Sam Neill is Merlin. Um, um, 
I'm trying to think of like somebody else that's in it, but like honestly, I I really can't. Uh, Sam Neill is in it. Yeah, he and, plays uh, Merlin. And he's he playing Merlin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Stephen King actually did a cameo in Rose Red, which was was cool. He was the pizza delivery guy. Nice. So is it was, horror? Was he aware that he was the pizza delivery guy? I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was before he got hit by a car, so oh, okay, he okay. might have at the time, gotcha. and then later didn't. <laughs> uh, what, what did you ask? Is it horror? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's Stephen yeah. King. I just read my favorite horror book of the year, and I know you haven't read it. You've probably seen it advertised recently, because it was recently, like, the book of the month for that little book of the month club. Butcher and Blackbird. Have oh, you seen I've the seen, advertisements? I've seen the it, Phenomenal. Okay, you gotta do it on Audible. It has the two different readers. The male reader has a thick Irish accent. Have your fast forward button ready, because okay. they are two serial killer killers who have a meat cute. Um, and it is very graphic, and the trigger warnings at the beginning are about a minute and 38 seconds long. Oh, my gosh. Now, a lot of them are, like, accidental cannibalism. Not so accidental cannibalism. Um, and then some Dom Sub stuff, but there is, um, some, like, torture, bone-breaking, eye-gouging. Um, the chick. Eyeballs. Yeah, Yeah, the chick is called the Orb Weaver. Just going to let you know that. But if you can get through that portion of it, the actual story is so, so good. And the two narrators are really good. Yeah. Highly crazy. recommend yeah. it. Uh, I don't see how you guys can read all that fiction. That just sounds ugly. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, does all it? right. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wrap my brain around reading so much clearly fictional nonsense. <laughs> you've, been, you've been very quiet during this section. Ace, this was your, your idea. What, what you got? For comfort oh. shows. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so mine, at least when it comes to my most kind of that I've seen again recently, actually came out uh, around this time last year. Uh, and uh, this was actually in response to an episode that we're doing tomorrow. Uh, we're covering uh, the uh, the 10 year anniversary of Iron Man 3 tomorrow. So that'd be great. Iron Man 3 is technically a Christmas movie and it's 10 years old now. So it's... Aww. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and it's Caleb's favorite, so I it figure... It sure is. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it is. No, yeah, he's he, making a face. Yeah, okay. no, he hates I, I watched it two nights ago, <laughs> to cover. and I had to watch Winter Soldier right after <laughs> to, like, restore my spirit. Oh, um, poor thing. So, yeah. Like uh, watching a scary movie where you gotta watch, like, something some really cartoons, happy afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I, have, I have a friend of mine who, um, Iron Man 3 came out on their birthday. Oh, wow. And then Winter Soldier, the next year, mm-hmm. came out on my birthday. And they're still <laughs> mad about it. They're like, Marvel gives you the best gifts. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, with Iron Man 3 being a Christmas movie, uh, by, uh, I mean, it's a shame, black movie. Damn near all of his movies are setting Christmas for some reason. Uh, But uh, it got me thinking, like, man, I could be watching the Gardens of the Galaxy Christmas special again. Oh, that's such a good... And so I did. That is really good. Since we are almost at Christmas, real quick, round table, what's everybody's favorite Christmas movie? What's your go-to? Oh, yeah. So it was Home Alone for me. And uh, I actually watched it with Oz. Well, and you were you were yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. I was I was making chicken and dumplings. Yeah, she was she was, I cooking, was cooking, and we were watching Home Alone. And that that has always been my favorite Christmas movie. But like, I gotta I gotta give it like the Guardians Christmas special. Yeah. That is an every year thing for me now. Mm-hmm. Like, I love it so much. Like, it's one of my favorite Christmas anything. And the song is just it's so catchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so good. Uh, so, I I, I love it. Um, that will always be like top three for me. Uh, yeah. The Gardens Christmas Special, uh, number one. Maybe it's because of, you know how old I was when I saw it, but uh, uh, Jingle All the Way. Oh yes. Yes. my yeah. gosh! Yeah, <laughs> love that movie. Turbo Man doll. Yes, come on. I, I love phenomenal. that movie too. Yeah. Like as as a child. Yeah. Like uh, I, 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 it's one of those things where I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to watch it, but yeah. I'm like. No, nope, I got to preserve mm-hmm. how I yeah, think yeah. about it. I just keep it on the shelf. There. I watch it every year. It's one of my top three. It's good. It's really it's so good, you know. And and also, I love the the life lessons about consumerism. And mm-hmm. uh, well, and that movie was was inspired by the uh, Tickle Me Elmo craze. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you guys remember that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, except Turbo Man is like 
infinitely less creepy than it took me <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a weird time for us. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there was, you know, there was a craze with toys in the '90s. I don't know what it was, but between uh, Furbies and Tickle Me Elmos, uh, kids had a fascination with odd furry creatures. It wasn't just in the '90s. My daughter, when she was about like five or six, I don't know if Kira was too young for this or not. There was these baby dolls that would you would feed them a bottle of liquid and they would poop or pee out gems and you could oh. make a bracelet. Do you remember these things? I do. They were terrifying and Sophia wanted one so bad. A shit bracelet? <laughs> I thought they were strange and I was, was so, so happy so that Kira weird. was not into that. <laughs> Sophia was obsessed because she had just started school. She was in like kindergarten or first grade and she was like, I have to have the baby that makes the bracelet. And I was like, no. no, 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 honey, no. <laughs> Any toy that pees or poops mm-hmm. is weird to me. Like, even it's, even like those little, like, the super realistic, because you know that they have the little, like, the super realistic baby dolls that you have to feed them, and then they poop. Yeah. They poop like poop. I thought those were like the reborns class. or no. something. No, no, no yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. They have, have super realistic yeah. creepy. Ones. I had I had one of those when I was a kid, where you feed it, and then like you have to change your diaper and stuff. It was weird. I also had another doll where you had to teach it how to talk. Oh wow, that's really cool. Yeah. I didn't have any cool toys like that when I was growing up because I lived in um, Germany, and it was like. Pre and then post, right after the wall coming down, and we didn't have cool shit. (laughs) My aunt would get us like shipping was outrageous, but my aunt would get us like a box and she would mail it once a year to you know, and it would be whatever the cool thing kind of was that year. But I mean, she didn't have kids, she didn't really know, so yeah, I didn't, I kind of missed. My husband always gigs me because a lot of the, like, 80s, 90s pop culture I don't necessarily get mm. um, just because I, I didn't have access to it. Yeah, I mean, um, I had the uh, all of the Star Wars toys from the special editions, and it's like, if I had left those in the boxes, I wouldn't have to work. <laughs> like, I had the mm. big Millennium Falcon oh, that, yeah. like, had the thing that came off of it, and Last I checked, like a brand new one of those in the box, it was like it was like fifteen, twenty grand or something like that. Oh wow! Which that's not like I wouldn't have to work money, but that yeah, is definitely that, like a, I could go on a vacation and just oh yeah, you mm-hmm. know, spend money like I had it right money. Yeah. yeah, and that was just for one of them. Like I had the um, the the slave one, the oh, yeah. that, that like did the had the little uh, carbonite thing you could put in it, and <laughs> the X wing with the R two D two, and you push down on R two D two, and the wings would. Pop out. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I love ours here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Man, that's great. I, I don't. I don't know if I had any toys that were you know that cool or you anything. You have the Megazord. I had uh, the uh, the the White Tiger Zord. Oh yeah. man. See, yeah. I never had that one. Yeah, that was that one was really cool because when I got, uh, I mean, this to- shows how '90s this was, but it came with like a uh, like a remote control, but it was connected. Uh, by a cord to the... Oh, yeah, so, you gotta so, follow yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool because it had, like, a little white ranger figure that, we, you know, you could prop up on top of it and, like, oh, yeah, it's, it's cool. Look at them. Do you remember Sky Dancers? I do remember Sky Dancers because I feel like that was, like, mid to late 90s and we came back to the U.S. in, like, 94. I loved Sky Dancers. My hair did not love no, Sky Dancers. No, they would get stuck every time. You would dance and be so excited dancing around, and then it would land in your hair every, every time. time. What is a Sky Dancer? Sky Dancer is like a, a doll. She has a platform that she stands she on. She was a fairy, wasn't yeah, she? she was Which a makes fairy. all the sense. Uh, that you, you hold oh, the platform and, you, and you, pull you pull the cord, and then, the and then she would fly up. Oh, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. I'm glad that we, we gave a visual representation for this. <laughs> Everybody did it, too. Yeah. Everybody but Kayla went to it. Oh, she did it. Well, that's what she did. <laughs> did, uh, did anybody else have a Stretch Armstrong? I had one of those. My brother um, did, and also didn't they do a wrestling figure, Hulk Hogan or something oh, yeah. that did that? Yeah, I had that one, or like the yeah. equivalent. I don't know if it's the same Th- company. They had a regular Anna Hollywood Yeah. Oh, oh of that. I had the yeah. regular. But I just yeah. had like the... The strip, the right. regular ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But you asked the question, what's your favorite? Um, so I know Chevy Chase is a horrible person. We, we don't love Chevy Chase, right? Yeah, I mean, um, of course, yeah, but, but Christmas Vacation. <laughs> However, yeah. National yeah. Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is one that I grew up on. So my dad and that side of my family, super, like, conservative and everything like you didn't cuss you didn't anything you were on your p's and q's when you were staying with them during the weekends or the holidays but they would put this movie on and you felt normal for like just a few minutes Mm -hmm. like they were laughing too and so yeah that became like in my teen years my favorite christmas movie just because we could quote it and not get in trouble Uh. and um it just stuck and now it's super nostalgic Aww. For me, yeah. So we watch that one every year. And then when you get older and you find out who Chevy Chase is, and it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really kind of does. Uh, yeah, just Google Chevy Chase community set if you yeah. don't know and want to know. I'll, I'll, I feel like I hate when people show their true colors. I really yeah. do. I mean, Chevy Chase is one of those, though, where, like, you find out about it, and, and then, then you're, you're like, like, it makes tracks. sense. You it go tracks. back, and you're like, oh, we should have seen this one. <laughs> yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Hmm. The signs were there all along. They were. But I, I yeah, so like. I still um, watch the movie. I'm. Same. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, you know, it's. We it's watch Chris Benoit matches, so oh, I mean, yeah. we are, we yeah. cannot, you know. Yeah. You, you have to separate the art from the artist sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So. you got to put up that, that mental block sometimes. So, like, yeah. damn, this murder was a damn good wrestler. This so, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, speaking <laughs> of that, Hogwarts Legacy came out this year. <laughs> and I played a shit ton of it. <laughs> it's a good game. I uh, game. I pirated it, and then, <laughs> and I don't, wouldn't say I played a shit ton of it, but uh, I petted all the cats. Yeah, all, all of them? All of them I could find. <laughs> <laughs> that was... A, I have not played a game like that in a long time. Um, just because of my reading addiction, I don't set aside time like that. Yeah. But I played that game to almost completion. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I think I'm 90% on it. And oh. then I walked away and never completed it because I got, like, just really bad I don't want to complete it vibes. Mm. I don't know. Um, and my... You know, my friend who has completed it is like, I can't believe you won't complete it. And I'm like, Cheyenne, I can't do it. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure um, you can still keep playing. Yeah, <laughs> you can. You can. But it just is one of those things where I know what happens. It's been spoiled oh. for me what happens at the end. And I don't want that thing to happen. Oh, oh so and it's like the, the, uh, the end of The Hobbit. Yeah, I like a main it. character. <laughs> understand completely. Yeah, a main character. I will read the Hobbit up mm-hmm. to a point, and I still haven't watched the third movie. Yeah, um, it's been like ten years. Now. I know, you, I know. You, you borrowed it from yeah, me, I and I gave it to you still in the wrapper. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> you missed nothing. The third Hobbit movie is god awful. Like, so I've heard. However, yeah, I know what happens, and it, it makes me sad. <laughs> me too, because I love that. Oh, yeah, it is the worst movie with dwarves in it. Like it's really bad. <laughs> Now you got to no, be thinking about no, all the movies not. with dwarves. No, it's not. My bad. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm like, huh? Uh, are you sure? It's the second worst movie with dwarves in it. What's the first? Erica. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm getting ready to read that. Aragon. Oh, so good, so mm. good. Yeah, that's a. Um, Just don't read Christopher Plony sci-fi, and you're good. That's what Caleb told me as yeah, well. He, he 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 he's got fantasy down. Yeah, not so much on the sci-fi. It but took I him kinda... ten years to write that sci-fi novel, and I'm just like. Come on, man. Just we, we just wanted more Aragon. Like, we, we didn't want this. Yeah, I kind of got um, FOMO this year with Murtaugh. Everybody was, like, so hyped for it. They'd waited so long. Um, I started seeing TikToks of Christopher Poloni. I hadn't really seen him on my radar. And uh, he was really great to his fans. Like, he remembered fans' names from the last book release. And it was, like, a long time ago. Years oh, and years and years. really sweet. And um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to read Murtaugh. And I messaged you. And I was like, do I need to read these other four books first? And you were like, yes. Yeah, it is very linear. It's not a Cosmere thing where it's like, oh, well, you could do this. No, it is literally like a one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to reread it before I read. 
Yeah. And if you need Caleb's set, let me know if you don't have your own because it's currently <laughs> on have, my shelf. I have my own. I actually have, a, I think, uh, two copies. Okay, cool. I have a, have a Lunar, and then I found a, a complete set at Goodwill for $5, and I was like, That's taking this set. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a really great find. I'm going to go, and I might get with you to do it. We might do, like, a Monday Girls' Day, and you're welcome to join. Um to go to Second and Charles um, and spend all my Christmas cash on some box sets that I really want Ooh. and some just, I've got a laundry list of books that I want to add to my shelf and I just want to cross as many of them off as I can. I love that. Um, uh, on To that note though, like uh, I've met him and he was fantastic. He was very much like a, you know, he, he, he was not one of those people, it was a book signing and he was not yeah. one of those people where it was like, okay, you know. He wanted to sit there and, and talk to every single person that came up, and it was he kind of caught me off guard because it was one of the first times I think I'd ever really been to something like that, and um and I kind of expected that you know where yeah. it was going to be like, and I came up he's like oh so have you read all the books why and he wanted to know you know what what I liked about the different characters and all this stuff right. and I was like I, 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 I you know <laughs> yeah I, I I don't have anything prepared uh, <laughs> I didn't write a speech <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, he was great, and uh, I really hope he will come back to Dragon Con. So hopefully, yeah, because so I, be I plan to make my way there one day. But if he doesn't, <laughs> if he doesn't come to Dragon Con, he was at Dragon Steel this year, I which are two that. completely unrelated events, even though they don't sound like I'm they are. I'm so excited! A lot of so yeah, around here. Yeah, I'm hoping he will come back to Dragon Steel. Dragons and, make everything better. At least. Yeah. <laughs> I think, or worse. <laughs> The resurgence of dragons was this year. I, we talked it, about that, yeah. It absolutely mm. was. Dragons are having their freaking moment right now, and I am so here for it. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think that, in even in when Game of Thrones was a big thing, I don't think there was that much like of a, uh, you know, dragons are big in culture as yeah, a result the, of that. The, there was a, a slight bump because, like, Game of Thrones, well, Game of Thrones didn't hit its, its stride until, like, what, season three? Yeah. And, and that was a few years after the release of Skyrim. So, like, I feel like if those two had coincided more... It might gotten, have happened. Yeah. But I also yeah. don't feel like Game of Thrones did as much with the dragons as yeah. they could have. Oh, no, they didn't. Like, there was, they were yeah. such a minor part of that show. And I think that they're finding out with House of Dragon, like, if you give more story to these dragons... Mm. And then, you know, it, it can hold its weight. I think yeah. there were, like, a few technical limitations that they had to deal with with those True. dragons. You know, like, you look at some of those shots of Danny on uh, Drogar. Drogar? Drogon. Drogon. Drogon, yeah. And, you know, look at some of those some of those shots. Some of them, when they're shrouded in darkness or clouds, look phenomenal. And then this one where she's, like, you know, never-ending story. And I'm like... <laughs> yeah, and they, their face looks... <laughs> Wonky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, something that happened this year is we found out about Never Ending Story three. So we decided <laughs> to watch it because we had watched Never Ending Story one, and we were like, "Hey, this holds up. It's still good." Then we watched Never Ending Story two, and we were like, eh, "You know, it, yeah, I was like, it's still there." But you it's know, not, it, it never gets better. Like, yeah, it, 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 it was not Never <laughs> well, Ending aliens. Story, but it was still fine. Then we, then Aliens is better than Alien. Oh, no. I, I disagree, face, but I understand. Yeah. You know. That face tells me everything. We didn't even finish it. The only thing it had going for it was Jack Black was in it. Jack Black. Oh. Jack yeah. Black is in it. He's, and it? he's very young, like maybe a teenager, early That's, 20s. Yeah, he, he would have to be. Yeah. yeah. It, it was like a, um, it was like some kind of weird thing where like it was made in this like Dutch like studio <laughs> oh, or something because no. they like couldn't get the money and like just it, Google Falcor from uh from that one he is a nightmare. Well, it, I I thought he was always terrifying. No no personally. no he's worse he's wow. absolutely yeah, no, no. terrifying. No. At least there was a shimmer yeah. on the on the one from <laughs> Never Ending Story the first two like no 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 this this one no it. I you know how much I love yarn but it looks like somebody just hot glued some yarn <laughs> to to a puppet. And hope for the best, and that it bad. failed miserably. We we <laughs> got to the point in the movie where Falcor arrives, yeah, no. and we I, I I got up off of the couch, <laughs> I or I, I ran across the room and turned it off, <laughs> like 
It was awful. So yeah, it was I, scary. that sounds that sounds <laughs> about right. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, this is Falcor from the third one. Oh no, that is. Yeah, awful. it is the stuff of absolute nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Poor buddy. Poor I little Tank right? Tank. He, he's, yeah, like, I mean, the plot is, it, it is just. The plot made no sense. Was there yeah. a plot? I don't even think Jack Black was there. That was it. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah like, the whole thing is literally, like, the plot was, like, um, these bullies come into the library to beat up uh, Bastion, who is recast as a terrible actor. Uh, and... Uh, they kind of ignore the timeline of the second movie, and then this is, like, just some random nonsense. Like, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And instead of, like, the old man in the fancy bookstore, they're in, like, the middle school library. The bullies come in there to beat him up for no reason. I mean, I guess that makes sense, because, like, a middle school bully doesn't need a reason to beat somebody up. Yeah. So he goes into the book to escape that. <laughs> and, yeah, and then uh, from there it gets worse. Yeah, then Jack Black's character realizes that Bastion went into the book, so he's like, oh, I can change things? Like, immediately, I can change things, and then just starts trying to, like, change things. And I'm like, the whole first movie is Bastion realizing that he's affecting this book, Mm -hmm. and Jack Black's character figures it out in, like, 20 seconds. Yeah, he goes goes full (laughs) Sauron immediately. He just picks the book up, he's like, oh, I can change everything in here. So he just starts, like, fucking with him, like, from out, it, it was, it was... Like, I mean, like, CW couldn't be this bad if they tried. <laughs> it was horrible. It was back, back to Falcor, like, why uh, why didn't they just use the, the original one? The Did fucking it, puppet that they surely still had from the first Yeah. Uh, it makes me think that, like, uh, w- did the same studio make this was third it, one? Was no, this it was an not. Authorized? So, yeah. okay. Was this an authorized uh, okay. movie? <laughs> I think this was like a, we're not going to do anything with this, so we're going to sell the rights for real cheap. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you got to pay extra for Falcor, though. <laughs> I, I, I think we looked it up, and I think they made the movie for like $120,000. Oh, Jesus. Like, yeah, yeah, it was like really, really, really cheap. We could take out a few loans and make <laughs> <laughs> We can make our own never Story, guys. Podcast is <laughs> oh my god, that, that shit's gonna end. Trust me. I, didn't didn't they make the first saw for less money than that? I though? think they did, and it I was, think yeah. uh, Memento too. Yeah, they both shot, of those were. Yeah, Christopher Nolan shot that like in college, like between classes right. and stuff. Yeah, so you can you can do more with less, folks. Yes. <laughs> true, true. God, it was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah there were a few. Few terrible things, but back to good things though. Yeah, Guardians Three. That's probably my comfort. I mean, not Guardians Three, but uh, Guardians Christmas Special. Probably one of my uh, one of my comfort comfort flicks. For sure. Uh, yeah, uh, we actually we reviewed that last year when it came out, and uh, and I, I've never seen Kevin beam so much talking about something Marvel related since Endgame. It hmm. was it was surprising <laughs> and shocking and a bit unnerving. You can feel it, and, and it may just be because I know both of you mm-hmm. so well, but you can really feel it coming through, the even just <laughs> on the audio, you know, um, how much you guys loved it, and, like, I really loved it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's tremendous. Like, it, it is a every year Christmas thing for me now. Yeah, yeah. My Christmas uh, thing that I love is, honestly, I guess it's traditional. I, I really like the... The claymation Rudolph. Yes. Oh, oh God, yes. Yes. And uh, Yukon Cornelius. The the Santa Claus, where he becomes Claus, and um, yeah, I love all of those. They're they're wonderful. Has anyone seen the? Uh, I'm sorry, to cut you off, Lauren. Mm-hmm. Did anyone see the uh, the Pac Man Christmas special? No, Am I the only one who missed that? that one? Didn't know that was a thing. It is a thing, and it is actually quite good to me. Or five year old me really enjoyed five-year-old it. Five year old me yeah. was like, "This is the amazing." Because Pac Man was my shit, <laughs> and so yeah, when I saw he had his own Christmas special, yeah. While, I, sorry, uh, no, go ahead. While we're here, mm-hmm. didn't me you and Oz agree to review the Star Wars Christmas special, and we haven't done that yet? Oh, we were running out of time. <laughs> I mean, we agreed to do it like two years ago, so that's you know, true. That's we true. we agreed to do it but, Christmas but past. If, if we're gonna do it, it needs to be around Christmas time, so either we forget yeah. about it. No, I I think I'll. <laughs> Because I've seen it already, so I think I'll... Oh, so you make, can see it again. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. I'm just saying I've already endured the initial He needs pain. y'all to. I need you guys to do it. Uh, you, under, you get me. I do. I, I do. Lauren's 
like, I understand what's happening here. He wants to torture people. <laughs> so, and when I was growing up, uh, my favorite, if you want to talk about kid Christmas stuff, anything to do with nutcrackers. Now, it might be because I was living in Germany, but there was a specific nutcracker movie, the Care Bear Nutcracker. Oh my yes. gosh, yes, that yes. was amazing. So good. I had it on tape. My aunt had recorded it or purchased it or something and sent it to me. And um, that is when my nutcracker obsession began. That has kind of continued. But, yeah. See, I, I kind of collect Care Bears. <laughs> I loved Care Bears as a kid. I rented all the movies from like movie gallery or whatever at the time, and yeah, that's. I what's have a up. shelf of nothing but Care Bears. Uh, some of the older ones too, from like the eighties and early nineties. I'm really bummed that I'm missing a lot of the video warehouse movie gallery blockbuster. Oh, um, I mean, I got it like by middle school and high school, but it was already on its way out. Yeah, like the height of it, late eighties, early nineties. I missed. All of that. They did not have that. Those were a dopamine hit that's hard to replicate today. You know, yeah. Because yeah. today, you know, if you want to see a movie, and you can just, you know, any kind of streaming service, just search for it and there it is. But mm -hmm. man, going into like a, a video warehouse or a movie gallery on like a Friday after school and, and hoping they got that copy of Terminator 2 and you find one, you know, one behind the box. Oh, yeah. You just start jumping yeah. around. Being yeah. so My brother's excited. thing was Surf Ninjas. Oh, um, oh And so that was like, <laughs> I hadn't thought about doing it forever. There's an episode where, <laughs> where we talk about three ninjas yeah. and oh, then yeah. Surf Ninjas and, and about how they're Ninja not Turtles. related at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love, I love uh, the three ninjas. And three surf ninjas, ninjas and Surf Ninjas were my brother's favorite thing. <laughs> and so when we came back to the States, he was like, Five, which would have put me at like almost yeah, right about ten, and um, I that was my first memory of one of those blockbuster type places mm -hmm. is going in there, and he would get Surf Ninjas, and I would get I know what you did last summer. Oh. So oh. I, I would uh, I had three that I usually went for, which was Princess and the Goblins, which was a really good book, and I still own. I have. Um, uh, Don's mom gave gave them to me. I have the first one and the second one. I don't one. think I've read that. Oh, they're really good. I'll, I'll let you borrow them. They're okay. good. Um, and then I would get Alvin and the Chickmunks, where they were in the hot air balloon and they went all around the world. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one was Critters, and I called them Monster Popples. You called them what now? Monster Popples. So you know what Popples are, right? No, I missed no, okay. that one. I'm sorry. Okay, so Popples were a cartoon in the 80s and early 90s that are kind of like Care Bears, except for they were these little guys that would curl upon themselves like an armadillo, and then they'd roll around, and then they would pop out. And then uh, that w it was just really super cute. And I loved that cartoon. Well, Critters is basically... The monster version of that. They God were man. evil and they rolled around and I just thought it was hilarious. And they let me watch it. <laughs> My parents yeah, did. Is, is that them? Is that yeah, that's that? a popple. Yeah, I uh, okay. I, I missed that one. Yeah, I missed that one too. <laughs> oh my gosh, I I've seen these toys. Yeah, yeah, that's a popple. I, I went straight to Gremlins. I uh, yeah, yeah. I skipped all of that. I've seen the popple <laughs> toys before. Yeah. They just unlocked something. <laughs> uh, critters, critters is is basically just the. It was like um, I think it was like an alien invasion, if I remember right. Like they crashed onto Earth and then they uh, they just like terrorized this poor little town. Very, oh, wow. very gremlin like, mm. but it mm -hmm. was critters, and they that was their thing. They rolled around and they would pop out at you, but they would just sit there, kind of like a triple, and so it was super great. That is pretty oh, cool. Did I, did I use another term that y'all yeah. don't know? Okay, that's Star Trek. No, uh, yeah, I, 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 I knew that. I knew the Star Trek reference. Okay, well, well, yeah, that went over my head. <laughs> yeah, Tribbles was an episode in Star Trek where they went to this one planet and they got a triple on on their ship, and it basically just. Multiplied, 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 and suddenly there's these little fur balls everywhere. There are mm -hmm. tribbles. Well, that sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. I love and, and then, in order to evac the crew from the ship, they have them eat the crew members. No, in the wrong movie. I'm yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> critters. <laughs> um, you know, speaking of like, like going to like a video store or whatever. Yeah, I miss that, like. That feeling of, of video games too, because mm -hmm. back then, unless you had like uh, a subscription to like uh, Electronics Gaming Monthly or whatever, mm -hmm. which that's a huge fucking throwback, um, 
Like, unless you had, like, that kind of thing, you didn't know anything about the games. Yeah. So it was like, there was no trailers or anything for video games back then. So you just went to the video store. You found a, much like going to a bookstore, if you don't know anything about the book, you found a video game cover and you were like, this looks like a cool thing I want to play. Mm-hmm. And then you took it home and you had five days to either beat it or take it back and and and, and not. And uh, it was just... It was just such a different thing because you didn't get that like overwhelming amount of like external opinions. Like right. now, it's like even if you tried to shut yourself out from it, there's oh, did you see the trailer for this? And mm-hmm. then there's there's like the reveal trailer, the launch trailer, <laughs> all these award shows, all these websites, yeah. social yeah. media, you know, word of mouth. It's just like back then, it was just a pure opinion. You just grabbed one off the shelf mm-hmm. and you liked it or you didn't and there was no like influencing right. of that decision. I hate that because Goodreads has gotten really bad for it. Um, I'm mm-hmm. reading the new Cassandra Clare um, speaking of 2023 releases the new Cassandra Clare series that she put out this year. Um, she did Mortal Instruments back 10 years ago-ish, probably now if not more. Um, but she has a new fantasy series, and I'm reading Swordbreaker um, right now. No, Sword Bear. Sword how, something. How YA is it? Sword Catcher. Oh. <laughs> um, how YA is it? Not. Not? not. Okay. But I, um, I, might, I might read it, because, like, I I actually love the series. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the, the TV and movie adaptations. Better than I did the books. Did you like Shadowhunters? I, did, I didn't like the book. I like the show. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like the, the Canadian CW Shadowhunters show. See, the thing about those was I just Canadian thought that CW. they were just um, unrealistically <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, I 100% get that. Um, however, uh, the gay couple on that show is like... Top tier awesome. Top tier awesome. <laughs> um, but I digress... The second book hasn't even come out. The first book just came out a few months ago, but it's on Goodreads and it already has like a two something. Mm. And because people are just like bombing, reviewing it for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, I guess because it's Cassandra Clare. Put the uh, reviews up. That's the test group. Yeah, I think that like there's an arc of it or something. I'm not sure, but then it's like. On my Reddit and on my TikTok that people are bomb reviewing this for no reason. And oh, I'm like, just, yeah, I don't know. Fast. I don't know what's going on with that. So I got a, I got an email today from Goodreads that made me so happy. What was it? Can you share? Uh, yeah, I am in the top 25% of readers saw on their website this year. Oh, that's so cool. I'm very happy. I was like, hey. That's so cool. I'll have to look out for an email from them. Uh, yeah, because I know if day. I got one, you find more than me. <laughs> Clearly, the people that vote in the Goodreads Awards don't know what they're talking about. Oh, my gosh. Um, So, do we want to segue? Do we want to start with movies like uh, Best and Worst of 2023 for each person? Or that we can get around to books? Or how do you want to do it? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, That's a great idea. We'll start with movies. Um, So, what's your high and what's your low, if you have one? um, So, I I would say the best movie I have seen this year... um, that is tough. I'm I'm gonna I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna split it. Um, I'm gonna say from a just like a my inner child nerdy. I love this perspective. It'll be Guardians three. I know you're gonna disagree with that heavily. Um, <laughs> I from my heart. From I know. From a and and also the emotional impact too of of that movie was mm-hmm. so good. But from a thought provoking standpoint though, it's definitely Oppenheimer. Um, you know, it's that that is the most interesting movie that I've ever seen. Like, and I, I honestly don't know if I necessarily want to see it again. Like, maybe one more time tops. Like, mm-hmm. I'd watch it with you, but I I just um, it, it's one of those things where I it, it is a like one of those life changing type things. Like, you know, you're better off for having seen it. It's really good. Um, but honestly, I like I can see how people would go and watch it and be like, this was incredibly boring because 99% of it is people talking in a room. And so if that's not your, you know, if, if a biopic is not your thing, then, you know. That's like The Lighthouse, which was a few years ago. I loved. Oh, I love Lighthouse. Thank you. But yeah. there are a lot of people that are like, 
I, it was so boring. I turned what? it off. And I'm like, you didn't understand the absolute unraveling of right. humanity that was happening, but you got to get on that level or else you're not, it's not for you. A lot of people oh. just don't want to see that side of humanity and so they don't allow themselves to go there. True, and true, it's true. Or a lot of people, I mean, you're a lot nicer than me. A lot of people just like to be handheld That's through certain true. experiences and yeah. they don't want to actually take the time to, to think about what the movie isn't saying but is saying at the same time. I mean, honestly, like, one of the most, like, thought-provoking and just, like, raw pieces of, like, uh, of, this is a television episode, but um, the the Rue episode of Euphoria, Mm, the middle one, it's literally the entire thing, it's 45 minutes of two people sitting in a diner talking. That's the whole episode, that's it. Yep. But it's so good, like, it's tremendously well done. Um, I think I got a little chill just thinking about how good it is, but that was that was good. Yeah, but a, a low point for me, movie wise, uh, uh, it's probably Blue Beetle. I would say. Mm. I'm trying to think if I've seen a worse movie. Thor was last year, right? That was Thor, last year. Um, yeah, that would definitely be winning. If- <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Is I'm looking up some yeah. of my favorites yeah. recently and seeing if they're this year or last. And the last two I've tried to look up were last. I'm trying year. to figure out like what where. where. When yeah. was this? Because time is an illusion. It, yeah. So. yeah. If it's within the last couple of years, we're probably going to let it slide. Yeah. Uh, Blue Beetle, though, yeah. Like, we came out of that, and I was like, a fucking AI wrote this movie. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just... And the thing about that, too, is it's one of those things where I really love the main character. Like, I, I like the actor, but, mm-hmm. I, I mean, there's only so much you can do for bad writing, you know? So yeah, that's a yeah. that's the high and low for me for this year. Uh, I'll, I'll go next then. Um, I think for me, for me the high, I actually I think I still have to give it to Across the Spider Verse. Mm. Um, and, and, and I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I loved it. Um, we went and saw it with the kids, and mm-hmm. Kira is a huge Spider Man fan. Oh. She loves Spider Man, and yeah, she was really into it. She was like, "This is amazing!" And then we both got very hung up on the ending. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like two and a half hours long, right? It is, yeah. yeah. And and yeah. like the kids were like, "That's it!" Like mm-hmm. like it had flown by. <laughs> it, it really did. And I had already seen it, so yeah. like, I knew the 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 ending was going to be cliffhanger yeah. that just dead stop. And like as that music's like playing, mm-hmm. they're all like this and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> It was so good though. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh I, I think the thing about me is that like, you know, even from a, a comic book standpoint, like I uh, I have Spider-Man fatigue, you know what I mean? Like uh, he's uh he, he's a character who has way too many derivatives and the fact that they made an entire comic book line and an, an entire movie line about these derivative characters. I'm just like, I, I, I have spider fatigue right now. Give me something new. Uh, but the thing about Miles Morales and about the, you know, the, the spider verse movies is that they, they actually make him a, a, a real character and not just a caricature, like a, a different skin of Spider-Man. And they actually take the time to develop him. And he has his own, his own arc his own ups and downs, his own troubles, his own problems that he needs to overcome, you know, and uh, and and that really goes a long way. And you know, and in the sequel, they they also started to do it with Gwen, you know, and so they're they're doing like the the most that they can with these characters that inherently have kind of a glass ceiling on them, because at, at the end of the day, if there's no Peter Parker, then there's there's none of this, mm-hmm. you know. But the fact that they were able to take these characters and just elevate them so much, I thought was just tremendous and told an incredible story along the way. Hopefully, uh, the, the sequel, hopefully we get it and hopefully it's good. So, so. this is on a completely unrelated to the story mm-hmm. note. Uh, I lost my shit in the movie theater <laughs> when Mayday came on the screen and she's wearing mm-hmm. the little crochet hat <laughs> and they took the time to do crochet stitches in the animation. Yep. I can see that that is a double stitch and that made me so fucking she, happy. Uh, she went ballistic. Like, <laughs> it wasn't knit. Yeah. They didn't look at it and go, oh, oh okay, well, we're just going to make this look like it's a beanie. No, right. no, that is crochet. They animated crochet. 
And it that looks really like cool. it <laughs> translates. And I was so excited. I lost my shit. I was I was like bouncing all around. I was like, I'm gonna make that damn hat. <laughs> I, I also noticed that I just forgot to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. I'm yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. You noticed right away. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, yeah. man, I wonder if Kay's gonna notice this. Uh, probably, maybe not, but as soon as Mayday popped on the screen, mm. I was like, no, they yeah, didn't. I, yeah, I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's double knitted. Double stitch. Double stitch, yeah. Double I said, crochet. Double crochet. I said, man, look at that double crocheted hat. Yeah. yeah. Soft yeah. chain. Yeah. 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 That's master level skill right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Kira loved it so much that after the, the movie came out, she begged me to get her a Miles Morales uh, outfit. Oh, nice. And so she just... Well, I like I had to be like, honey, you gotta, you gotta. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> we must change out of that outfit. Yeah, she was in it for like I would leave for a couple days and come yeah. back, and she'd still be wearing. It. She uh, had washed it and like hung out until like, <laughs> and then immediately changed back into it. And I was like, honey, everyone's tired of seeing you in this outfit. Hey, look, if you only have if, if you only have one Spider Man outfit, then you need to have it on the ready. You never know when you need the Spider Man. <laughs> you know. Miles is her favorite, sir. Yeah. I loved Gwen in the second one, especially. Mm-hmm. Like everybody loved the first Spider Verse movie. I could take it or leave it. Like I don't dislike it at all. Mm. It's just fine to me. But I thought the second one, like the animation in the first one, hurts my face. Like I just don't like it. But the second one, like I thought they just stepped it up on every mm-hmm. every level. And uh, both of the main kind of characters there, uh, with both Gwen and Miles, they they just. They they have their their own arc together and then they have their own separate arcs yeah. and it's all like really good and it all makes sense and like uh, God I hope we get the second movie before like twenty thirty because <laughs> they already lost I think the whole VFX team or something was it during the strike you mean or no no strike? like the VFX team I think is still on strike because they don't have a oh union. I think that team like walked out oh, oh that's Cause, problematic because they're that the, is. The, the 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 animators and stuff are working on getting a union. Because mm. they don't have one, and they really sorely need one. Uh, but that's a different thing. But, yeah. Yeah, tremendous pick on that. What What's the low point for you? Yeah, uh, man. Uh, so, you know, like, if you fall down a flight of stairs, like, when you hit that first bump, you think, oh, that fucking sucked. But at least it's over. And then you hit another one, and then another one, and then another one. Then you wonder, like, where's the bottom? Like, when do I stop Bouncing up these goddamn stairs. We haven't seen Aquaman 2 yet. Yeah, I know. So I, I think it's over, but in a couple of days, I'm going to have to watch Aquaman 2. And we'll see what happens. So as a superhero fan in general, is going to the theater this year has almost been like signing up for a 12-round fight with prime Mike Tyson. Like, I just know. Or today, Mike Or today, Tyson. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I know I'm going to get my shit rocked. And, uh, and, and yeah, that's kind of how it's been, man. Um, yeah, th- there's been two movies that, uh, at least from the superhero realm, that I know I loved. Guardians 3 and, and Spider-Verse. And, and outside of that, I, I've been just been getting black eyes. Uh, I've been getting my shit rocked all the time. So uh, it's almost like a, a roulette. A roulette, <laughs> just, just pick one. And, and it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's rough being a superhero <laughs> reviewer sometimes. Uh, at least, at least this is um, this is like that year you had to watch the whole first season of Batwoman. Oh, okay, yeah, that it's not that bad. Well, it's because that yeah. was you knew how many stairs there were. I knew how many stairs there were. Still, yeah, yeah, and I still <laughs> bounced with people. Yeah. yeah, that was rough. Uh, but if I had to pick one to be like just one movie in general to be like the absolute uh, rock bottomness, um, so it's 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 difficult because while the Marvels is as bad as I thought it was going to be, um, like the. The Flash was the biggest disappointment to me. Oh, I, I had, forgot all about that. Because I had the highest expectations for The Flash. <laughs> My brain already deleted it. <laughs> can't, can't have this trauma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 
the one that was kind of in the middle were like, I think this could go either way for me was was Indy, and and I lean more towards the I wish they never made this goddamn movie. Um, it's better than Crystal Skulls. Yeah, we we gave we both <laughs> we both. You can check out the assembly we did on this. We yeah. both gave the new Indy very high score. Not not like I think we gave it like seven seven point five somewhere yeah. in there. I don't think it was like the worst. Mm. No, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah. I would better, take it over Crystal Skulls any day. I'd take it over Temple of Doom. I'll say it. Whereas I, I, I would need to be very high to enjoy that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mean. You that thought is. it was? You thought Indy was worse than Blue Beetle? Uh, yeah, I kind of did actually. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. It's so yeah. It's it's rough. Just pick one. Just, pick and, one. And, yeah. just, just roll it. Roll a die. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Blue Beetle is also down in the category two, and wait a couple of days, and I might say Aquaman too. I don't know. We'll we got to get our tickets for that. We do. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. do that when this is over. Yeah. Now. Lauren, what about you? So I had something in mind for my favorite, my high point, but I googled it while I was sitting here, and it actually came out at the end of last year. Well, we want to know. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, cool Northman. Oh, that was oh, Northman really good. was freaking phenomenal, that was and that was gonna be my pick. Yeah. But no, that was the end of last year. The Northman um, has come up on one of these before too, but we don't have to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Um, I'm trying to rack my brain about everything that I've seen this year in the theaters. I this is the one category that I'm probably the least experienced at in everybody here because I just don't. I'm not really a movie watcher. I will watch a show first, or I will obviously pick up a book. Yeah. And I've actually dabbled in a few of the video games this year, mm. but movies are <gasps> just too. my... I am so excited to talk about video games, because normally I can't. <laughs> She's the same um, way, yeah. Like, <laughs> she gained more than I have this year. I got some gold stars. <laughs> That's nice. awesome. Uh, but I, I... Movies this year was not my year, but I did see Killers of the Blood Moon. I think it's what uh, it is. Flower Moon. Flower Moon, yeah. Yes. I, I heard that I was really good. I did see it. It was really, really, really good. I was terrified because it's Martin Scorsese mm-hmm. that he was going to go too graphic violent, <laughs> go casino on me or something. You know what I mean? I love casino. But um, that's those scenes in casino, though, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um I don't do graphic violence, Um, and so I was worried the whole time, and actually, it was probably 45 minutes too long, but as a story, it was really, really, really good, and I really liked it, and so that's up there with one of my highlights for the year. Somebody famously said, and I can't remember who it was, so I guess not that famously, (laughs) Was like this is Leo's best performance. Would you agree with that? Because like that's a high like fucking ever? bar. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, okay, I gotta see this because either this person's completely full of shit, or like <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be mind blowing. So his character is very simple in this movie. Um, you get very frustrated with his choices, <laughs> um, and at multiple times, my husband had to be like, Lauren, <laughs> because I got very frustrated with some of his choices. Um, but oh, he I, plays it, from like an incompetence standpoint. No, not like he's not like mentally disabled. He is. Well, I know. I just mean right. like incompetent. Yes, yes, he is not a good decision maker, and he oh. trusts all of the wrong people. I hate an incompetent. And player. you literally are like so angry at him for some of the choices that he's making. You're like, why are you doing this? You know that this is probably hurting this person. Why are you doing it every single day when you you have doubts? You can see it in your eyes. So I, you know what I would say is probably one of his better performances that I've seen. Because you can literally see the battle in his eyes where he knows something is up. Lauren, you were talking about your top uh, movie highlights. Yeah. yeah, so The Killers of Flower and Moon um, was really good. Leonardo DiCaprio is amazing in it. Um, and it's really, really good based slightly on a true story, but really, really stretched by Martin Scorsese movie. Um, like, these things were happening, and this tribe really did have all this oil money. But... Obviously, all of these characters are made up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, like the FBI character. So, like, I, I think the FBI agent is a real person, right? And, like, yeah. the movie's based on, like, a biography about him, right? Like, a, Or, like, a 
you know, like a loose biography. Right, from what I understand, correct. Yeah. Um, and Martin Scorsese did work hand in hand with that specific tribe. I can't remember the name of it. That is, this is based off as well and got there okay on a lot of things. So, really enjoyed that movie. Um, Dungeons and Dragons came out this year. Did, and yes. that was fantastic. Absolutely loved that one. Um, it was so, so good. I don't even know what else to say about it other than it was so, so good. I think we're going to get a sequel to that. It, it didn't necessarily, like, make a ton of money. But I think, you know, after, like, the merchandising and all of that stuff and, like, um, how they've been able to integrate it with Beyond and then also, you know, that really led into, you know, the thing about D&D for them is anytime they come out with something like that, it increases people's interest in the base game. Mm -hmm. Um, So anytime, you know, like with with Critical Role, um, you know, on Amazon or with certainly something that's going to come up later in Baldur's Gate 3, (laughs) You know, all these things that, you know, it all kind of, even if the movie itself didn't, you know, didn't make this huge splash at the box office, it didn't do bad either. And also, like, once again, they're making money off, you know, off of it because people are, it's gaining people's interest in D&D in general. So. And something that did make a huge splash at the box office, it is, in fact, her birthday today. Taylor Swift killing it in the movie theater, mm. right? And, like... I was like, it's Barbie's birthday? <laughs> no, no, no. It's That's the real thought. it's the real Barbie's birthday uh-huh. today. And I think she went about it in a way you know more about this behind the scenes stuff that's really yeah. opening doors for other companies and people to put out their movies. So basically to not to, you know, uh, drag it out, but um, you know, there's kind of this mantra in Hollywood of like Oh, well, people don't want to go to the movies anymore. But then, like, Barbie will come out, or Oppenheimer, which both broke records and all this thing. Or Top Gun, you know? It's yeah. like, you know, Marvel and DC are like, oh, our tentpole superhero movies aren't bringing home a billion dollars because we put our name on it. I mean, DC's never did, but, <laughs> you know, they aren't bringing home $200 million because they have DC <laughs> stand on them. And, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, and then, you know, you have these big movies like Top Gun that ran for months and months in theaters. So good. And I'm not even a fan of the first one. And then, uh, you know, Oppenheimer, Barbie. So you have people like, like Taylor Swift that went directly to AMC and said, hey, we'll, you know, we're going to shoot this. We're doing the damn concert anyway. We have all this massive production that's going to go into these. We can put it in theaters. And it made tons of money. And, I mean, it literally has a production budget, essentially, of zero because they were going to do it anyway. So, you know, it's already part of her tour. It's not like they did, like, a, a, a separate thing that they weren't already going to do, you know, for this. And so she went directly to AMC. AMC produced it for, like, a very small cut because they also didn't have to do any work. And basically the message is like, hey, Hollywood, if you're not going to use these theaters, then we will. And you're starting to see more and more of that where – uh, Beyonce did the same thing right. with her tour. Um, you're starting to see uh, TV shows that have major episodes and things like that. We'll put them out in theaters. Mm-hmm. Critical Role. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Critical Role is doing stuff with them too. So it, it's kind of this thing where it's like these theaters are valuable spaces, and that's kind of the message. Like, hey, Hollywood, if you're not going to use these, then there are tons of other people out there who would love to use them. People like going to the theater. I mean. You know, granted, not very many people like being in a super packed theater with a bunch, you know, people that are going to be in there chewing gum and like bring their babies and all this other stuff. But for the most part, like the, this whole shared enjoyment concept, people really like that. And um, yeah, I mean, they're just, there is a huge market for it still. And I think it's a great market for tours, especially hard to get tickets. Yeah. yeah because I mean. there were so many people who didn't get Taylor Swift tickets or Beyonce yeah. tickets or. Somebody else on their level. Um, yeah. I can't even think great now. Is there anybody else on their level? Um, Them shit is expensive, though. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't... Metallica in the 80s tickets. I don't know. Right, what exactly. <laughs> and they couldn't get them because they either couldn't afford them or literally could not physically get them because they sold out in, like, the pre-sale sold out in two minutes. Yeah. And then you were queued for callbacks. And that is how I got my tickets was on a callback. 
yeah. of like, okay, we effed up. We're going to go ahead and hold these extra 500 tickets and you just give us your credit card number and you tell us your max budget and we're going to find you a couple of tickets. <laughs> and that's how we got tickets. Wow. Yeah. Um, and they were decent seats and we got them for a great price, which was like 350 375 a ticket. For the seats that we had, they were good prices. Yeah. Um, so... Well, and you got people like me, too, that, like, there's no, I mean, there's not a band on earth, right, that I would want to go and sit in, in a, um, even for free. Like, I just don't want to be in a stadium with 80,000 people. That's I a, I, I did do a whole video on my channel about the experience. Um, screaming fuck the patriarchy with 80,000 other, you know, people is super fun. That yeah. sounds mm. cathartic. It was it does. amazing. Screaming your favorite song that's 10 minutes long, you know, with 80,000 people is super fun. Leaving and having to use the MARTA system or having to walk because there's no ride sharing, that's not fun. No. Um, we ran into loads and loads and loads of problems at one o'clock in the morning in Atlanta. Um, so that, you know, wasn't fun. And I think that this is another example for this movie. It's a really great idea because anybody who has any sort of anxiety or um, physical disability. Well, even um, my mom is deaf and she went and saw it with my sister Easton. Um, they, uh, movies have the little close, close caption yeah. that you can get. But she said... Um, there's no way that she could have gone to a um, concert, and mm -hmm. they don't have that option at concerts. They have some sign language translators. Well, I yeah. know Taylor has one, but mom, um, mom prefers um, reading. She, she likes to have the reading and a translator because sometimes uh, translators will do C instead of ASL, uh, which are two different things. Yeah. Uh, so sign. Uh, ASL is like you speak like Yoda, and mm -hmm. then C is you, um, they sign it as you say the words. Got and it. And so it depends on the signer if she is cool with it or not. Plus, Makes also, total sense. a lot of times when you have a person who is interpreting the lyrics, um, you're not going to have the same mm. person sign it the same way. Also, I don't know what kind of, like, um, I have a friend who is mostly deaf. Um, and loud, extreme noises like that actually is painful to her. Yeah, mom so. too. Uh, so she was, like, very excited because before she lost her hearing, her and dad would go to concerts all the time. Mm -hmm. And so she had a great time at the Taylor Swift thing. She said she was up and dancing with all the other people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the whole greatness of that experience. Um, so that was one of my highs. And then my low, um, I have a couple of them, but I think the biggest low is the one that I walked out of, which is your high and Guardians. Um, and I didn't think it was a bad movie. Um, by the ending, like, I had come back into the theater and was enjoying myself a little bit. Um, I didn't think it was a bad movie, man. It just needed trigger warnings. That was, like, the only thing. Yeah. Uh, anybody who has a softness for animals, it's going to be a rough, rough watch for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Because it really it's was. not even just the actual when it happens. You can see it coming for yeah. miles. Well, just the fact that... Those scenes are in the past, and you never heard of any of those other characters, exactly. right? Exactly. Right. And you're like, oh, oh the only one person's making that out of here. So yeah. literally by the time they were introduced, I already knew. And there was a dread building, and I was just waiting for it, and I was waiting for it, and I was like, at any point, it's going to happen. And so it kind of ruins the movie for me. But I know why they had to do it. They want to pull on those emotional heartstrings. They want to get you into the movie. Just me, as a personal preference, it was on my, I don't like crying so hard that I need an inhaler almost. So the little mantra that the the bunny was saying. Oh no I no can't. no! Oh, <laughs> we can't. Yeah. Yeah. I cry for like weeks and it would just randomly pop in my head I, and I'd be like, "Why is this happening?" I couldn't. Yeah. I could not eat meat for probably almost three weeks after that movie. And I don't eat rabbit, but I couldn't eat meat for almost three weeks. I, I understand. It, it got me. It got me. I was crying. And Kira 
Kira was mad. She was so she mad. Kira was so with you guys? We watched it at the house. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, Kira was yeah, mad. She was very upset with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because I had already seen it, right? And I knew it was going to happen. But yeah. Um, yeah, my mom went, went on opening night with us to watch that. And oh it was gosh. very... Um, she's one of those people that like loves Guardians because of like the soundtrack and it's all yeah, like hard. That's why I was so excited. And, and, ha 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 ha! And oh, yes. baby Groot's so cute and he yes. does the thing. And I'm like, well, you guys had your movies. <laughs> <laughs> this is ours. <laughs> now we're gonna. <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna get you. Now we're gonna have drama. The movie. <laughs> oh, it was awful. It, 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 it ended up being my favorite Guardians movie. Oh yeah, I, 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 it's like, a good story. Yeah, and I. But it was, I I agree. It needed some trigger warnings. I normally I, can't stand Chris Pratt, but I actually really like him in that. Even even him, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah Star Lord is is my dude as far as Marvel goes, um, but I probably wouldn't have seen it if they would have given me trigger warnings. I would have just skipped that one. Yeah. Movies don't come with ones like books do. I know, well, and it doesn't make sense. I'm voting in 2024 we do movie trigger warnings like books do. Mm-hmm. I want a minute and 30 seconds of the trigger warnings for this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if it makes you feel any better, like, none of these bad superhero movies gave me trigger warnings before I went to see them. <laughs> yeah. I had to sit through them anyway. You didn't know they were going to be uh, bad, hey, Ace, hey. really. Okay. I had, I had a hunch. You had a hunch? Really? At, at least for Star Wars, they tell me up front Daisy Ridley is going to be in the movie, so I know it's going to be trash. Oh, come anyway. on now. <laughs> oh, you, on these podcast assembles, he goes hard on Daisy Ridley. I so. know, but I don't blame her. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Name, name the breakout Daisy Ridley performance. I'll wait. You remember when she stared solemnly? No. Okay. No. Look here. Okay. There are a lot of choices that were made in those movies. She did a movie with Tom Holland right after that, and it's trash, and it ain't because of Tom Holland. <laughs> no, I'm just saying there are a lot of choices in those movies that affected actors and actresses very poorly that I think that if they had another route into it, they might have been okay. Like, I mean, Oscar Isaac seems fine, and... Adam Driver was fucking Hot Topic Sith, and he's fine. <laughs> I'm just saying. And yet you got poor girl who had to delete her whole entire Instagram and social media because I don't think we should awful. ever yeah. rise an actor or no, an actress no, no. that hard. So so let me yeah let me just reiterate like I do not think that them being cyber bullied is okay. Like even if they're the Thank worst you. actress on the planet, they don't deserve <laughs> to be freaking bullied over it. Like, the whole them being run off social media is disgusting, toxic nonsense. If you're going to run anybody off of social media, it should be Kathleen Kennedy because she approved all that shit. <laughs> South Park. South Park tried. Yeah, South Park yeah. is doing... You know, I, and I I feel like South Park might have fucked up because I feel like Disney was about to fire her. And then that came out and they were like, well, we can't fire her now because they don't think it's because of the South Park episode. <laughs> anyway... What were your uh, what was your highs and lows for movies twenty twenty three? Uh, well, I'm gonna try not to do ones that that y'all said. Um, so I think that my surprise good movie of the year was Barbie. Oh, so mm. I was very surprised. I went into that movie expecting it to be a joke. Same. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ended up like emotionally connected to Barbie. And I was not expecting that because I wasn't a Barbie girl growing I up. I wasn't really a Barbie, Barbie girl, girl either. No. Not in the Barbie girl, not in the Barbie world. Mm. Yeah. I I was very, very pleasantly surprised. And then the soundtrack, too, that went with that with Billie Eilish, like, the lyrics to that song. Yeah. Like, whew. Yeah. It was a very, it was a very good movie. I mean, it did have its cringe moments, like, yeah. uh, Knuff, but, you know. <laughs> but, but it was so, like, it doesn't take itself seriously. It's my favorite. I haven't seen, um, the second, um... Uh, Harrison Ford plays a robot. What's what's it called? Uh, Blade Runner. Yeah, I have not seen the second Blade Runner that he's apparently super good in. Yeah. Um, but it's my favorite Ryan Gosling role. Like, I, he nailed it. I mean, absolutely nailed it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Ryan Gosling role, but he was good in it. Yeah. Uh, and then I think my uh, awful movie of the year, um, I love the... Happy faces on my youngins. I knew this was coming. <laughs> I almost put it in my negatives. I did. I loved the happy face on my youngins. They were very energetic, and they loved it. Uh, but Five Nights at Freddy's 
can fuck off. I hated it. <laughs> I, I heard that this was was awful. It, it is. A few reviewers, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, they uh, they loved it, but then after the fact, James came in and he was like, "There was a lot of stuff wrong with it." Now that I'm outside of the theater and away <laughs> from the happy of it, like it wasn't that great. And I'm mm. like, "Ha huh, ha, huh, yeah, yeah, yeah." I was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it as it was happening. Yeah. I understand that. Like, when I went to see The Last Jedi, I didn't walk out of the theater going, that was fucking trash. I hated it. I walked out of there going, huh, something's not quite right. Yeah, that's kind and of then, the way James And was. then over the over time, I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As he started to think about it. Now, Kira, on the other hand, is still, like, over the moon. She's like, oh, mm. I got to see this one and that one. An aspect of the movie that I actually did really like is that they had cameos by the YouTubers that streamed it, uh, uh, that gave Five Nights at Freddy's the game its hype. Um, so I did like the fact that they paid homage to the people that put them on the map. Uh, but besides that, like Matthew Lillard, Mac- okay, Matthew mm. Lillard, his his anything Matthew Lillard is in is high on my list. Yeah, especially at the beginning when he's like. <laughs> It's a job. Oh, yeah. It's a job. <laughs> it's a job. You're not yeah. going to like it, but it's a it's job. It's got to be a security guard at a haunted Chuck E. Cheese. You know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It's fine. No big deal. Better than the one you got. Um, <laughs> but poor PETA. PETA deserved better than that. Like, why was he there? I know, man. I was like, I was watching that, and I was like, you know, out of the two stars of the Hunger Games, it's really not fair that you ended up in this, and, like, Jennifer Lawrence ended up in... A lot of the stuff that she's in. I but. did like it. Didn't go to theaters. I don't think, or maybe it did. But the new Jennifer Lawrence movie. I actually did not mind that movie either. Like that one. Um, the one where she's trying to date. Uh, she's paid to date a uh, like eighteen year old boy by the parents. Oh, I've yeah. heard some crappy things about that she's one. I didn't bad in hate it, 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 but it's, though. But I watched the whole movie. Like, it, if you're it was, into Jennifer Lawrence, she goes like full. Full Nike. Hey. Like, the whole she, biscuit. The movie she can does, be that bad. She fights. <laughs> You're being a little she, too she rough. She fights so, somebody so naked like, and things are going all over yeah. the place. So she's in, she talks this kid into skinny dipping with her. Spoilers, by the way, if you haven't seen Yeah. It. She talks this kid into skinny dipping with her. These people try to steal their clothes while they're in the water. She runs out full naked. Like, there's no body double. It is yeah. her. Full naked and beats the shit out of these people. I mean, that sounds like Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. If you listen to any of her interviews, that sounds like it, something it, she I would felt say. a little bit like it was Jennifer Lawrence playing Jennifer Lawrence a yeah. little bit in the this movie. movie. The whole yeah. movie, I'm like, did she just ad lib like this whole did thing? Did she like, write this character? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds like her in any interview that mm-hmm. she's in. Mm. You know? But, but yeah, I mean, they basically, she's like a, you know, 30-year-old right. that drinks all the time. And, yeah, it's basically her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, this isn't like, just like a documentary that just didn't start <laughs> filming. <laughs> but there was a lot of points that, like, I was laughing or that I didn't hate it nearly. When Baron threw it on, I was like, this is going to be the, mm. I'm going to walk out of the room on this Same. one. Same. And I watched the whole thing, and I was like, that wasn't the worst movie I've seen this year. I think it's because the guy, the kid that they um, are trying to get her to date, he was so good. He was excellent playing that very awkward age. Yeah, and and like his character has a really good arc through the movie, and Mm -hmm. that's something that's, you know, should be. Bottom of the barrel, but it, <laughs> you just don't get it a lot anymore. Nope. Right. So it's very refreshing to see him go on this like actual like character journey, despite the protagonist being a huge piece of shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, I completely agree. Like character journey, what? Yeah, right. Yeah, not a light switch at the end where he's like, "Oh, I learned all these things," yeah. you know. All right, TV guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, TV. I Hopefully, just, we... uh, yeah. One, one more, really quick. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's uh, he, he's not canceled yet, so I'm still celebrating him. But uh, Creed three uh, was a tremendous movie that came out at the beginning oh, of this year. Yeah, Man, I really I, liked yeah. Creed. Why are we canceling Michael B. Jordan? Uh, no, no, not, not Michael, Michael B. Jordan. Jordan. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Majors. Uh, we're not canceling him yet. Okay. Right. Oh no, I'm pretty sure. I'll right. have he's on him. the list. I have to Google. Uh, p- potentially, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's some allegations out there. You know, he may or may not have done some things. They they released the body cam footage. Like, it's, yeah, it's. So he did some things. He did. He yeah, did I was. Things. Allegedly, yeah, you know, 
Video can be tampered with. Has it, hasn't been proven yes. in court of law. <laughs> yeah, has yet. not been proven in court of law yet. <laughs> oh, wait, where's you the know? blue folder? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. this will fix everything. This will fix I left everything. My, yeah. I left the blue folder at the house. You sorry. know, uh, yeah, worst case scenario, you know, uh, you know, Chevy Chase, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It may, may not be a great person, but... Uh, <laughs> Put out some good movies. I do love the Creed movies, though. Yeah. Like, uh, the Rocky movies were one that mm-hmm. we had on tape when I was a kid living overseas. And uh, the Creed movies, I feel like, have that same yeah. feel to them. Mm-hmm. I, I've really enjoyed those. I think Creed 3 is my favorite of the Creed movies. Creed so, 1 was my favorite. 1 is really good. Time. I don't I like 2. I have <laughs> Have you seen Rocky? You like Rocky? No, I, I was like, Rocky are you either. into boxing? Like, do you know the sport at all? Because no, it's really. a huge part of it, so you they may not be for watching, you. Watching, uh, watching, no, no, never really a thing. I like boxing video games and movies. Mm. Um, I don't super love the sport. Like, it'd have to be, it has to be like somebody, re- like it, like, like it has to be like a Tyson fight or like a yeah. Muhammad Ali or something like that. It's kind of. Like the tip top level of that, I can enjoy. But boxing was really big in my teenage years. Um, Evander Holyfield, oh, Mike yeah. Tyson. Um, my stepdad, when I was in my teens, was Puerto Rican, and there was a lot of Puerto Rican fighters, the Miguel Cotos, and things like that coming out at the time. Um, and so boxing was always on in my house. Um, my favorite boxing movie is Million Dollar Baby, though. Uh, I think that that, that of... one is so good. Mm, yeah. yeah, I've actually seen that one. Huh? Oh, you've seen that one. Yeah, yeah. I've um, seen that one. My favorite is actually the one where um, uh, Christian Bale's like his crackhead his, brother. The, yeah, the, uh, oh. yeah, the fighter. Uh, the fighter. Yeah, tremendous. I yeah. really like yeah. the Tom. Oh no, that's a that's a mixed martial but, arts. That, that is a good one. Movie. Though, uh, Warrior. Uh, Warrior. Yeah. 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 yeah, super good too. Yeah. I've not seen that one either. Oh. <laughs> it's Tom that. Hardy with his shirt off ninety um, percent of the movie. Okay, it's, so that's not why I loved it, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> It was it's a contributing factor. Real good. <laughs> um, I, I will say before we move on, uh, I got to give honorable mention to the uh, Hunger Games prequel. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I that seen was it yet. really good. We it saw was it. Really good. It's. I think it's my favorite Hunger Games movie. The more the wh- while we were when we came out of the theater, I was like, other than Catching Fire, that was the best one. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then as the further we get from it, I'm like. No, it was just the best one. Like, yeah, it was the best one. There's yeah. some things, I mean, I know this is the beginning of December, so there are some things out or coming out before the end of this year that I haven't seen yet that I, I am excited for slightly. Um, Napoleon I haven't seen yet. I, I want to see that too. And I Wonka comes out Christmas Day. Wonka, I have gotten so many mixed reviews, and I'm trying to go in there without... Like for Wonka, Wonka like from uh, um, from like the media. Media, thank yeah. you so much. I'm trying to avoid the. Yeah, the because people are really ragging on a few things on it, and I'm. I don't want to go in there with that headspace. Mm. You know what I mean? Would yeah. Jeremy Allen have played a? I think his name is Jeremy Allen, right? Yeah, Would he have been a better like young Wonka? Wonka? But. I think Timothy Chalamet is going to do something with he that. He has great hair. He yeah. does have I, good hair. I really like him. Um, he killed it in Dune. Um, his uh, SNL sketch with Pete Davidson is classic. Uh, and I got to say, like, um, if you'd have told me that Baldur's Gate 3 was going to win Game of the Year, I would have been like, cool. But then if you'd have told me that Timothy Chalamet was going to be the one to announce it, I would have been like, that's even better. There's no way that'll happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I really liked him in his debut, um, Call Me By My Name, yeah. or Your Name, something like that. Yeah. Um, that was such a good movie. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with it. I want to go see that one really bad. Um, yeah. And then, like I said, I haven't made it to see Napoleon yet. Same, I haven't either. Um, all right, we got to move on to TV. Yes, we're going to be here until <laughs> we'll midnight <laughs> going. Um, yeah, but this will be faster, I think, because honestly, not really the best year for TV as far as stuff that came out this year. The SAG strike, I feel like, really hit us hard for TV this year, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, and the writer strike was already yes. going before that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we, we talked about it earlier, uh, Suits. I'm so glad that it's made this huge resurgence this year. Love it. It's such a good, like, character-driven show. There's not anything else on like it. Um, I have serious worries about the um, <laughs> about this spinoff slash reboot slash whatever that they're going to try to do because 
the thing that Hollywood won't want to admit is that one of the reasons that Suits was so good is because the writer's room had like 12, 14 people in it. Mm. You know, it wasn't like now where it's like, here, write an episode. Yeah. You know? Um, and, you know, so a well-staffed writer's room goes a long way because you got 10 plus people bouncing ideas off of each other and you take the best of everybody's ideas and that's what makes it to the episode. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just, I hate, I hope that it won't be a parody of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, um, uh, the first half of season two of Invincible is a very yes. recent release. Um, you and Kevin actually just reviewed that, right? Yeah, we did. And Loved it was, that was tremendous. That's definitely a high for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember if, uh, if the second season, no, I believe the last of us came out this year. Yeah. Last of us is definitely a a high mark. I only watched one episode of that. Oh, the best episode. Yeah. I watched the best episode. So (laughs) I'm assuming you mean episode three. Is that the one you watched? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the number. I just know the context. That's the one. That's the one. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, The love story. I watched the love story. (laughs) That was such a great. The zombies were. No, I didn't watch any of the zombies. (laughs) That was so great, and it won Best Adaptation at the Video Game Awards oh, yeah, this, did, uh, huh? this past week. It did. Um, that really, was, That was an interesting, uh, when we watched that, like, I don't know what was going on with some of the things that were happening on the Video Game Awards. Yeah, the, the internet is real pissed about it, because it was like, um, the award show was like 92% trailers and musical acts, and then like 8% Awards. There yeah. was some good trailers that we're going to have to talk about when we get to the video game section. Though. I, I agree, but it's just like, uh, okay, uh, and the winner of the next award is uh, this person. Now let's move along yeah. to, to eight minutes of paid ads. You know, yeah. if, if you guys really want to get catch like a really good awards show, the Homies Award is coming up. The Homies really soon. Award is coming Woo! up, and this yes. will be my first one. This will be I your, will be yes. listening in. I'm so excited. Yeah. Normally, I'm just yelling at the stereo in the car. <laughs> this gonna, year, I get to be at Ground yeah. Zero. It's, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Caleb's going to host with me. I believe uh, the Homie Oz is as well. Uh, and and because uh, the the Homie Committee, it's not uh, the deciding body anymore. It is going to be up to all of the listening homies to to vote. Oh, year. that's fantastic. Oh. I'm so excited. Is it yes. going to be on your Spotify or just on your Patreon? Uh, no, it's, it's going to be everywhere. Yeah, awesome. It's going to be yeah. everywhere. I yeah. shall blast it. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, the, the link will be up as soon as Aquaman comes out, and that way I can officially put it out for people to vote fairly. And, uh, yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun, and there's going to be a lot of alcohol here on our part. So Yes. yes. <laughs> Sounds so fun. Um, the I'm trying to think of the low for TV shows. Uh, we're still going to review Loki. I've yeah. heard nothing but good things Same. about it. Same. Um, did uh, did She Hulk come out this year? Was that this year? That was last year. Okay. I remember specifically because uh, uh, Kevin was still here, and in one of his angry rants, he said the most hilarious thing ever. He said, "I didn't want to see some some giant green torque monster," and that shit just had me dying. Because uh, <laughs> you know, she wasn't the problem with that show, though. Like. I mean, it it was definitely like the writing was just oh, awful. Yeah, yeah uh, Tatiana uh, Maslany, I think she is uh, just a beautiful name. She, she right. Is, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, she she's incredible. Like I don't know if you guys ever saw Orphan Black. That was the show I first saw her on. But she's great. Uh, this this TV show just really let her down. Uh, really let down a lot of people. Yeah, it really um, let me down. Yeah, it was. It it was yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was bad. Um what's the um I try to remember if this came out this year. It was like a Netflix limited run with uh Kevin Hart, it's like the main character. Oh it's yeah. It's called like True Story or Crime Story or something like that. Something yeah, like true like true story or something like that. And uh Wesley Snipes is in it. That's right. It's his yeah. brother. And it's like a six or seven episode. It's not a ongoing series, it's just like a little like mm-hmm. one shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was so good. Um uh, it's a, it's like a crime drama or whatever. Um, wow, yeah, I'm trying to think of a low if it wasn't if it wasn't yeah. for for me. Uh, it was probably Secret Invasion. Oh yeah, I didn't even watch that. Yeah, so um, Ahsoka is definitely a high. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, How do you feel about the new Mando season? 
Oh well, that was this year, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, for I, me, that that's that's. It's, I'm not gonna say it's a low, but it's not a high. It's a it's a mad, yeah. yeah. For, Ahsoka overall. is still like. Ahsoka mm-hmm. is tip top. Wasn't um my show um Andor's last, last year? Andor was last it wrapped, year, like end of last year. Mm. Okay. Andor that's definitely would have been a. That's what's screwing uh-huh. me is I keep falling like thinking things that were the end of last year yeah. or this year. I'm the little blue star from Mario. Time is an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that was this year, wasn't it? That was this year, yeah. Oh, that was really good. Uh, Mario? Yeah. Mm. Uh, something I watched this year, it's not from this year, but was uh, Chernobyl. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Baron just watched that. Oh, my God. It was so good. I mean, parts of it are hard to watch mm-hmm. um, because just like thinking about like the... The, the way that some of those people died, it's like the most horrific way you can mm-hmm. imagine dying. It's awful. Um, I mean, it's just like, it, it would be the worst thing ever. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was such a good show. Oh, super yeah. well acted. Uh, the casting was tremendous. And uh, we reviewed that, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, this year. And it was, um, like I said, it, it's not new. It came out a couple years ago. But yeah. I... I watched it because of The Last of Us, yeah. because it's the same showrunner. And so I was like, well, I want to see some of this person's other work, because mm-hmm. I know the base material is not for me. So yeah. let me see what the showrunner's going to do with it. And I was very, very pleased with it. Yeah, yeah. Chernobyl is, is darkly excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's, no, there's no happy episode. It's <laughs> right. Just, it starts, like, a fucking reactor blows up <laughs> in the first five minutes of the first episode, yeah. and then it goes somehow downhill from Right. <laughs> But yeah. it's but the the elements of it that are true are just crazy. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Um, just like the uh, the the mismanagement of it all. Yeah, you know, it's it, it sent me down like a I have to know everything about it like fucking spiral where I was just like looking at like the true real facts of everything mm-hmm. for like yeah. weeks after. You know, there was a time where if you asked me about Chernobyl, I could talk for like three, four hours without <laughs> without skipping a beat, you know, and you'd probably be like, all right, well, I'm going to go now. So, what you got, Ace? Uh, yeah, so for me, I think uh, as far as the highest goal for TV, uh, mine is definitely uh, Daredevil Season 1. No, I'm joking. No. <laughs> was a great, <laughs> was a great season. Yeah. Um. Uh, no, I it's got to be Invincible Season 2, Part 1. Mm-hmm. I uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. I also really, uh, I enjoyed Gen V quite a bit. I thought they, they kind of fumbled towards the end. Uh, but it was still, uh, it was still overall enjoyable for me. Um, man, I, I really didn't watch a whole lot of new TV this year, probably for obvious reasons. The Shield was new for you? The Shield was new for me, and mm-hmm. that is definitely... Way up there, Morty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it got way up there. Uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed the Shield, man. And like, I, I, and you hadn't seen it when it was coming out. No, no. Wow. So yeah, I was about like, close to twenty years too late. I was trying, been trying to get him to watch it for twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I just like brought yeah. the box set right. over. <laughs> Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, and I'm just going to leave this here. Yeah. Yeah. I think he watched the whole show. It's like seven seasons. He watched it in what, mm-hmm. two weeks? Yeah. yeah. Very short turnaround time. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Great TV show. Uh, you know, I've even seen like a lot of like retrospective uh, takes on the show, you know, because uh, it, it does belong to be mentioned with the likes of your Sopranos or your Breaking Bads, even, you know, in terms of like its subject matter and like the, the tone of the show. Uh, but I guess because like the time frame that it came out or whatever reason, it kind of, it, it, it hit the cultural zeitgeist, but not as hard as it should have for whatever reason. Yeah. But great show. Great show. As far as the ones I didn't like for me, uh, again, Secret Invasion. Uh, yeah, I watched and reviewed it for the podcast. Uh, it's a, a very famous Marvel comic storyline. And, uh, and again, the TV show just really uh, let me down. You know, it didn't uh, didn't hit the mark, so that hurt my feelings quite a bit. Uh, it was the first time that uh, Nick Fury or Sam Jackson really just looked and felt and performed like an old man, and uh, you know, yeah, and and then, so that that sucked. And the show kept reminding you, hey, he's old and he's washed, and then they never did anything to rectify it at the end. <laughs> oh no, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Amelia Clark was in it. I do like her. Yeah. Okay. Me too, but I feel like not in this show. Not yeah. in this yeah, show. Yeah, this this may not be the 
Better or worse <laughs> than her Terminator performance? I think it's probably better. Because Genesis is real bad. Genesis Me is Before real bad. You is really good, though. <laughs> Me Before You is one I watched one time. I can't repeat because I needed to be, like, sedated. But um, <laughs> the book it is was also, good. the book will tear you up. So will the second one, Me After You? Mm. Nope, nope. That's a nope mm. from Lauren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have both of those books, and they'll they'll fuck with you as much as the movie did. Oof. <laughs> and uh, in terms of, of low, like I, uh, I guess technically I, I have to throw this one here too. I watched one episode of Velma just to check it out. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. So what do you got, Lauren? <laughs> so I want to speak to Gen V for just oh, a second. Yeah. Because yeah. so like. Ironically, I'm talking this show up to Kay. She doesn't watch The Boys. Mm. And I'm like, but I think you'd really like Gen V. It's so good. And, like, the powers are so unique and everything. And the one episode where she happens to be in the room was the finale. Oh. And she's like. Oh. This, this happens a lot, though. Uh, <laughs> Timmy, Timmy will be watching a show, and he'll be hyping it up and everything. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the one episode I happen to see is, like, the finale. And I'm like, okay, well, now I know what happens. So. But spoilers don't bother me. But she was watching it. She was like, this is the show you've been telling me about that's so good and everything? I'm like, well, this this isn't good. No, <laughs> no, this is not yeah, great. I was like, this is a, I mean, if you like it, babe. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, 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 no. I promise it wasn't all like this. <laughs> no judgment. You do you. But <laughs> I'll admit to liking terrible things. I know. mean, I... Rose Red is a comfort show, okay? If you Google that, you're going to see some... It's not great. <laughs> I mean, so you brought up Velma, too. Yeah. And um, Mindy Kaling is the, the yeah. lead writer on that. She's also the lead writer on Sex Lives of College Girls, which is not a porn, even though it sounds like it is. It does sound like it, it's okay, a, but it's a good show. It's a great show on HBO, and she also writes that. So it's mm. just so crazy to me how, like, there's one show that I could watch over and over again. It's amazing. And then that show is just... I couldn't even bring myself because yeah, apparently yeah, it's, it's just tremendously bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Lauren, what you got? Um, we got new Black Mirror episodes this oh, year. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Couldn't and get past the first episode of the new season. No, any of it. Oh yeah. Um, pick another episode. Pick another episode because they are all standalone. Yeah, it's anthology, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. I will give you some suggestions of some of my favorite episodes. I'll take them because I've um, heard so many good things that I'm like, no, I can't. Do yeah, it. they're definitely flops. They're definitely flops, and then there are freaking fantastic episodes. What do you think of the one really quick with uh, Anthony Mackie and Yaya Abdul Mateen, the the video game? Okay, I was gonna say you're gonna have to give me yeah. a plot. <laughs> um, I really liked that episode. Yeah, that one. Threw it me is for a loop. so thought thought provoking though. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. That is one of my favorites, as well as um, the one where he's the tester. Oh, um, I remember. Uh, He's like the VR tester of some kind. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He's done. That one was really good. That one was so good. I liked the Miley Cyrus one a lot, where I the see ant that one. Um, sedates her. She plays a pop star, and the ant is like sedating her. Uh, Miley Cyrus sedated sounds good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she doesn't. I mean, if you're not a Miley Cyrus fan, she's not alive in most of the show. Oh. Like she's like heavily sedated and in a coma state, and then they make an AI of her, like. While she's still, like, aware and everything, while she's at the height of her pop stardom, they make these AI dolls of her to sell to the girls so that they can bring them into their own home. And what they do is they use that AI and they sedate her because she's starting to push back on some of the decisions and um, make an AI her to perform Mm. out of this material that she'd given to make these mini robots to go into girls' homes. Um, An AI that likes to put people to sleep. Sounds far fit. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I love Black Mirror. I have been watching it for many years. And um, we also got new Love and Robots. Mm. Um, did not like it as much as the season one of Love and Robots. I thought that they were a little repetitive with their theming on season two. I don't know. Did you watch? Do you watch Love and Robots? I know what it is about. I watched okay. certain episodes. Yeah. Um, they were a little repetitive on their theming. Um, it was very more horror based in season two. I don't know if they're going with an overall theme for each season, but um, I loved season one. Season two was meh. For me, it was not fantastic. Um, we also got Queen Charlotte. Did oh you my watch gosh. that? Queen Charlotte was 
was good. So, so, so good. Have you watched Bridgerton as well or just Queen Charlotte? Okay. Um, super, super good. I'm super looking forward to season three um, of Bridgerton because I love Bridgerton. Um, I still need to catch season two of that. Season two is my favorite season. It's got... Um, the chick from Sex Education. Yeah, I can't think of her name. I can't either. Maeve? Yes. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, 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 no. The, the, um, one of her annoying little uh, friends. Oh. The um, Middle Eastern one. Uh, oh, one of the like mean girls from... Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. One of Ruby's friends. Yeah, I can't remember her name either. Um, but she's so beautiful in in this season, and I just became obsessed with her and had to watch Sex Education. I had not seen it until after I watched season two of Bridgerton. So you'll really... Did you watch all of it? I have not seen the newest season yet. Uh, okay, okay, so such a good show. Uh, when you watch Barbie, you'll be like, Greta Gerwig definitely fucking loves Sex Education because... Okay. Like, so much of the cast is yeah, in that. for real? Yeah. I haven't seen Barbie. Yeah, yeah. Adam plays, like, a straight-laced office person with no oh, British wow. accent. So, there's, like, there's a couple people where it's, like, them doing American accents, mm-hmm. and, and, it, and it just, it does not compute. My brain was just like, this is wrong. Like, this is clearly being dubbed. Like, you know. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, and then Lowe's, man. Oh, we lost, we lost camera two again. I thought Uh-oh. you you got thought you got it plugged up. No, no, no I, couldn't I, find I, that. I said you I couldn't. Oh, you couldn't <laughs> find that. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Are we are we just shot on that angle? Yeah, we just shot on that all angle. right, well, all right, that's then. okay. Yeah. All right, that's a okay. Um, my low. We tried to watch Discovery of Witches. It didn't come out this year. It's an older show. We tried to watch it because the book was good. Um, we. I think DNF did after one episode. Um, mm. it's just real, real cringy. Might get better. A, a TV series is such a time investment, you know? It really is. You got like three episodes tops to hook me, and then I can't, you know? That's know generous. You got three. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's well, I mean, like, if the first episode is just awful, I probably won't even finish that. But I mean, if it's like, if, you know, if, if the first episode's like, okay, I want to see some more of this, then sure. Uh, if the first episode is horrible, but a character yeah. catches me, yeah. I'll mm-hmm. move on. Yeah. But if that doesn't happen, then I'll just, I don't care, um, I'll stop. <laughs> everybody has recommended uh, For All Mankind to me, which is, uh, it's I on, seen that one. It's, uh, it's on Apple or whatever, so, you know, fuck Apple, so it's on <laughs> Plex for me. Um, if you're thinking of subscribing to them to watch it, hit me up, and I'll make sure you don't give them any money. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I couldn't, first episode, I just, I'm like, this is awful, I hate it, <laughs> and I won't watch it. Not to go back to to movies, but there is a movie apparently that recently came out on Netflix. Mahershala Ali is in it, and uh, I the name of that, the the uh, the lady that's in it. But uh, has anyone heard about this? Does it, is it ringing any bells? I, I don't know that actor by name. Um, uh, True Detective season three. Have you seen that? I have. They took True Detective off of Netflix as soon as I wanted to get caught up on it. That's unfortunate. Um, what else would you see him? Have you seen him in, perhaps? The name sounds crazy uh, familiar. He's also the Green the... Book with, um, uh, 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 Viggo Mortensen. I love Viggo Mortensen, but I haven't seen the Green yeah. Book. Uh, <laughs> all, all three of us are. Viggo Mortensen! I that name. Yeah. Uh, he was also, if you, well, you pro- probably didn't see Luke Cage. He's like the main villain. Yeah, he's the main villain in that, Luke Cage. In season one. For a bit of the season. Mm-mm. Nope. So uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but I probably haven't seen it. <laughs> so yeah. that's well, well, we don't he, need he's to keep... incredible. But apparently this is a really amazing movie that they put out on Netflix. It's, uh, I guess the premise is about uh, the, there's these, these people living in a cab or they uh, Airbnb being a cabin out in the woods and having a good time. But then their internet goes down. Is it the Batista one? No, no, not the Batista one. Oh, okay. it, it sounds for me. It sounds similar. <laughs> that was the one I immediately right. thought of. I mean, it, uh, that that sounds like a horrible premise already. Yeah, like, you're right. in the woods and the internet's <laughs> yeah. down. Fuck. But then uh, you know, uh, up comes uh, Mahershala Ali. He's knocking on the door and he's saying, "Hey, I'm actually the guy that you know you rented this to. This is my property. Look, there's some shit going down." And they're insinuating that like they're being attacked by, you know, maybe a, a, a foreign country or some sort. And, uh, you know, so he's trying to convince this lady that, hey, I, this is actually my home. You know, I live here. I, I just need to pay my family in for shelter. And then 
shit gets wild and and more things are unveiled. Mm. But I'll have to look that one up because I have not seen one, that mm. one or heard much about that one. Yeah, supposedly really good. He's a really good actor, so we'll see. I trust you. Did you uh, Did you have any more Lowe's? No. Okay, what you got? <laughs> did you have any more Home Depots? <laughs> <laughs> With a, not a sponsor. <laughs> but you can be. <laughs> you can be. Uh, TV shows. Um, I, I don't watch TV shows unless I'm watching them with you. Mm. And so a lot of the TV shows that I've watched this year have been ones that I've watched with you. I really enjoyed Sex Education. I was pleasantly surprised that that one was as good as it was going to be. Um, you liked Queen Charlotte, right? I did. I liked Queen Charlotte. Um, that was that was pretty good. Um, I yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really think I agree with a lot of the ones that y'all have said. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the trouble with going last on these things. Mm-hmm. Well, how about this? We'll yeah. start going the other direction yeah, yeah, to the yeah, video yeah. games. Yeah, we'll we'll go the other way. So, um, yeah, we want to do video games next, and then and yeah, then we'll, we'll end with the books, end. and then maybe like a real quick what you're looking forward to coming out in 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I can go last on books for sure because I have read less than anybody <laughs> at this table, Not, mm. which is good company to be in. No, for sure. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. way that's late. right. Because graphic novel. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I don't know if I, you've I, seen I a TV show. <laughs> what? Ruby. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got really into Ruby this year. Um, Right after I had uh, my surgery, I I binge-watched Ruby. What is that one? I have Emotional trauma. That's (laughs) why I have not watched it. (laughs) We missed uh, a a one you could definitely talk about. It's One Piece. Oh, my gosh, yeah. One Piece was amazing. One Piece was really, really I did watch that. Uh, What I loved about One Piece was that they leaned into the anime instead of away from it. Oh, you mean the live action? mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of trying to make it be translate into like you know everyday life no if if this person had a had a a bunny rabbit on his head in the anime (laughs) did they have it on then in the show he's got a fucking bunny rabbit on his head (laughs) no explanation no no needed okay no it was definitely a show for the one piece fans i felt like Mm. it was really good i liked it a whole lot um i i was very pleasantly surprised with the, the depth that the actors were able to go with some of it because they foreshadowed a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up mm-hmm. that um, unless you knew about it, you really wouldn't get it. But the actors were, like, really good at being able to show that in a way that wasn't, like, in your face. So There's another anime you were working your way through, too, that you were telling me about. Oh. Um, it's probably Ruby. Ruby was mm. the other one. Okay. I was watching One Piece. Uh, the anime. Um, the anime, that's right. Yeah. Um, a, it's not like a streamed show or anything, but you and I have both been working our way through Critical Role. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. That definitely counts. That yeah. does count, because yeah. podcasts, I can go. Yeah. I got lots of podcasts. But, <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, I, I would say Critical Role is more of a YouTube show. I mean... I listen point. to it on as, as oh. a podcast. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, and I watch because a lot of times when I'm playing uh, video games or I have to drive long distances, uh, I listen to podcast and Critical Role tells a story, so it keeps my brain kind of active when I'm having to do something like driving, yeah. and I hate it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, that is why my podcast count has gone down so far, is because I listen to it in the car typically and. I don't spend quite as much time in the, in the car as I used to when I had eight podcasts I was listening to actively. <laughs> also fair. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the the thing about One Piece, the live action, is like when I was watching it, is the whole time I was sitting there like, if this can get, do all these numbers, mm-hmm. then Hollywood can stop fucking dumbing down Star Wars and comic books yeah. and all this other stuff and just make it. Because like, it was just... It, it was, was it was perfect. Like yeah, yeah. It, it was it was really perfect. It, it I, I'm not a f- into everything instead of shying away from it or trying to make a legitimate reason on why something was the way that it was. Where you know in anime, like 
you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, it really doesn't matter. You run into a guy on the street and he's got like wacky hair and you've never seen his eyeballs because he always wears these funky glasses. <laughs> like, that's normal. We're just right. going to roll with it instead of trying to like cover that up. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and I wish that Netflix had figured that out earlier when they did Death Note. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the president of Netflix said the casting for Luffy was by far the hardest casting decision they've ever made across any of their content. I believe and it, And they too. nailed it. Yeah, because, like, you had to get him right. He's the heart of mm. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I, yeah, they nailed it. And they it. even I mean, left him, like, Luffy's cringy kind of moments where he just... Anime man character. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. When he just randomly, like, screams happy things. I'm about to say, oh, about to say let me guess, overly optimistic. Oh, overly, overly optimistic. optimistic. Yeah. He, he, he literally, like, yells out the name of his moves when he does that. <laughs> yeah. Like, it is 100% just tried yeah. and true to the anime, and I... And as somebody who doesn't care about the anime, mm-hmm. I just loved it. I just ate it up. Yeah, good. yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, the guy that plays Luffy, um, he is like only twenty. He's like oh. he's like a baby. Yeah. Everyone else on the set is like late twenties, early thirties. Um, but he's like he's like a baby. And the guy that plays Sanji, I really liked him because he um, he learned how to cook. And actually cooked for huh. the cast members so that he could portray uh, Sanji at an accurate level because Sanji was like, he, he created the food for everybody. And mm-hmm. so he took that to heart and like really, really put that into it. And I just, I don't know. I like the backstories of everything. So it was, it was mm. good. That's awesome. Yeah. And then Ruby just ripped my heart out. And, mm. and as someone with a PTSD and anxiety and, and OCD and all these other a- crazy acronyms, uh, trigger warnings, like, yeah, it's going to get you. So just be prepared. But it was good. It was really good. And you can you can catch the homie Dylan uh, on Superhero Homies <laughs> where you guys reviewed both of the Ruby yeah. versus the Justice Ruby X Justice League. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Strangest combination ever. Yeah, that is when he told me that y'all were doing that, I yeah. was like, well, that's odd. Uh-huh. Yeah. This yes, is a Kelsier in Fortnite level. <laughs> this is a weird thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what your peanut butter is doing on my tacos. Uh, <laughs> but, but these things do not go together. <laughs> but so, did, so do any of y'all watch Ruby besides that version? Or is that the only... That, that Well, obviously Dylan I've, has seen all of oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dylan and yeah. me have watched all of it. I've seen the first season. Uh, I have seen them interact with the Justice League twice. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. If you're going to start the show... The first season is very much a, you can tell they had no budget. Mm. So the only people who are colored or um, fully drawn out are the people who are important on the show. Uh, All of the doves are just silhouettes. (laughs) They're just silhouettes that walk around. They didn't even draw them. No, they're just just silhouettes that just walk around everywhere. Uh, But one of the things that I really liked about Ruby is that, especially if you watched it like I did where it was back-to-back for nine seasons... You can see how their um, artistic, they, they grew. And you can oh, see yeah. that. Not just in their storytelling, but also in the way that they drew. And you can tell it, too, with the voice actors. Because they didn't change really that much either. And so it was like, you got to grow up with them. And that was like one of the things that I really, really enjoyed. And I also really loved the way that they dealt with a lot of mental health things. Because as someone who is slightly bonkers... I like things that show bonkers people. So <laughs> <laughs> I forgot a low. Oh, The Witcher new season. Ooh, I, I haven't even watched. Yeah, I, I I'll put it on my it. low list, but I haven't even watched it. <laughs> and as someone who's so passionate about that that you know mm-hmm. concept and like the whole that whole you know just intellectual property. For me to not even be interested in picking it up is. I watched two episodes, and I'll tell you. I didn't have any strong desire to finish it. Yeah. I had lost the... De- I, I don't know if it really is that this season is so bad or if it is, like my husband said, the knowing what's coming. Yeah. The knowing that they're about to swatch, swap out this actor that is so beloved. It was over for me anyway exactly. at the end of this season. So it's one of those things where you're just like, I'm not invested now. What's the point for Netflix to continue on? They've got to know that like... 
No, Clint's gonna watch it. Yeah, like yeah. It, it may be cheaper for them to just cut ties. It point. might be a Robert Pattinson Batman moment. It might be. Well, it's not like Robert Pattinson is like midway <laughs> filling the shoes of like Christian Bell halfway through the Dark Knight trilogy. Though. Yeah, no, that's what no, they're doing true. here. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, I mean, um, I tell you what, Netflix should just cut bait on this, and they'll be in need of a new. Fan, they can do the high Warhammer. fantasy series. That wasn't what I was thinking, but they could do that. <laughs> but well, I, who is doing Warhammer? Uh, Henry Cavill. No, uh, I mean, but it, oh, what Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well. That's 50-50. Yeah. We, could, we <laughs> well, could get an Invincible or yeah. we could get a Wheel of Time. I think that with how involved <laughs> with how involved Henry is, I think we're going to get something good. I mean, we, can we all can. said that about The Witcher, yeah. though. Yeah. It's but a matter of do they listen to him. It, that's the whole thing. And I think yeah. he's, like, producing it, isn't he? I think he, he is, like, got, the showrunner. Like, he has so. really been hands-on with it, yeah. so that's what's making me think that it's going to be good. Like, so. he knows the material. Yeah. I mean, it's always possible that, you know, the first season comes out and then Amazon's like, you know, Henry, we need you to change this, this, and this. And then he's going to walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he can, uh, he'll be old enough to play Dalinar by then and we can just uh, I agree. do the damn thing. He's a big Stormlight fan. Oh, well, there you go. amazing. Yeah. yeah, he is a big Stormlight fan, so that would be, I feel like he would do it. So, uh, before we get to that, though, video games. Video yeah. games! We're going to let you start off. Go start your okay, video so games. This, this is the year of video games for me. Really okay, is. so I did not play video games until after I moved out of my mom's house because my parents didn't... Well, they thought the video games were basically a waste of time, and I was not allowed to play them. Um they are totally wrong about the waste of time <laughs> part, but, you know. Yeah. Time enjoyed is not is time well spent. I agree, Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm also, like, a huge book nerd is because a lot of the time that they didn't care what I read, and I read some things that a 15-year-old probably should not be reading. Mm. That's exactly but. the reason why I read as much as I did is because they, both sets of my parents really carefully watched what I was watching or playing, mm. but if I was reading it, they were like, oh, she was reading the book! Look at my book, girl! I'm like, Yeah! Getting those accelerated reader points <laughs> for Harlequin romances. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, don't get me started. But um, this year, I started playing Genshin in February. Genshin Impact, and oh, yeah. I was like really hardcore into Genshin. I loved it so much, and I still really, really love it. But it was my gateway drug to Final Fantasy. <laughs> uh, 14 14 yeah. And, yeah and Genshin Impact actually made it to like the final round of the player's choice of the VGAs this year which wow. I'm yeah. not really surprised about like I am surprised but I'm not surprised but because they do a lot of stuff for fan service is a thing in Genshin yeah but for it to not like a new Mario game out though I mean that's <laughs> just that's insane yeah. Venti Venti you get Venti I get Venti. it yeah yeah. I love Venti. Venti is one of the characters. You're like Starbucks for large or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When she told me about him, I was like, "So is there a symbolism here? Does the number twenty like mean something to this character?" No. And she's like, "No, he's just a cute twink." And I'm like, "All right, well, yes, yes that is what he is. All right, I get it. I mean, I understand. He's a cute twink, and I love him so much. He is adorable." Um, but yeah, one of the things I liked about Genshin Impact was that the story, that it has a, every character has a really in-depth backstory, and I liked exploring that and unlocking the character's backstories, because they have these little things where you can play through as the character, and like, learning about their history and why they are the way that they are, and it makes running around as that person a little bit more enjoyable. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. So, I was like, really super into that, until... Uh, my friend Zug was like, hey, I play this game called Final Fantasy. Look at my character. And I was like, I don't know what Final Fantasy is. Shut <laughs> up. Let me see. It was so cute. Because <laughs> I love Final Fantasy. I was really big into Final Fantasy XII, where a lot of people weren't, because it was too political was the reason I got on a lot of things. But uh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, it, too. Hey, it was yeah. it was very beautiful. Vaughn should not have been the main character. Oh, okay. It should have been Baltha there. Um, or Ash, I would have been okay with Ash too. But you know, it is what it is, and we can we can all agree to hate Vaughn together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when he sent me a picture of his little Lollafell, because he plays a Lollafell, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what is this potato? <laughs> <laughs> 
And so then I was like, okay, I'm going to make an account. And I fell down a rabbit hole of awesome. I play a Lollafell, of course. And I I found a guild of nothing but other Lollafells. <laughs> and we have a wonderful time. Um, I am a terrible, terrible... Uh, oh my god, oh how my cute. cute. Yeah, yeah, those are Lollafells. Yeah, I knew they didn't know what they were, so I That's figured so I would. That's so cute. <laughs> this is my character and my chocobo. <laughs> so my... I want to play Final Fantasy 16 or 14. 14, 14. 14. Yeah. 14. So my character's name is Scallop Patat because my favorite type of scallop potato- uh, potatoes are scallop potatoes, and Lollafells are known as potatoes. And so I'm like, her name is Scallop Patat. And then um, my <laughs> chocobo um, that you get, <laughs> I named it Cheesy Poof. And so every time I get on Cheesy Poof, I'm like, Cheesy Poof, away! And it's just so much joy. I'm just so excited. I need that kind of joy in my life. <laughs> I know, right? And so one of the, my favorite things is um, crafting and collecting. You can collect all the flowers and you can mine all the rocks. <laughs> that sounds so good. I played this. Okay, you go, and then I'm going to talk about the it's game I played. It's so fun. It's so fun. I do all the things, and when I ride my chocobo, the fucking chocobo music plays. <gasps> it has its song. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need this in my life. I'm going to be really mad at Baron when I get home that he has not brought this to me. It's so I amazing. Mean- and I, oh, 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 okay, so my character has little fairy wings, okay? That's technically a fashion accessory, and so you can't have a minion and a f- fashion accessory at the same time. That's mm-hmm. a problem. Get it together, Square Enix. I need to have both. Um, but the little, you can have these little minions, these little cutesy things that uh-huh. follow you around wherever you go. That sounds so fun. I need just a trope of them. Yes, I have, <laughs> I have a puppy dog. I have, I have a flying I have a ship. I have a flappy little turtle that flies through the air. <laughs> I must do I have, this. I have a chocobo that's in a shell, uh, like his eggshell. He hasn't fully hatched out, and he's just waddling around. Baby! Around. It's adorable. I love him so much. But I am going, I am a level 50 crafter almost uh, Almost all the crafting things. She has all the crafting jobs. Yeah. So, all of them. You can have, Jesus. So the, the cool thing about the Final Fantasy XIV, uh, as opposed to like WoW, is like mm-hmm. rather than having to have all these alts, Whatever type of weapon you have equipped mm-hmm. determines what your job is at that it's point. It's very Final Fantasy X-2. You change, mm. like, the dress sphere concept mm-hmm. is very much that. Yeah, but it's just your weapon yeah. that changes different. So so you can use your different, like, armor. Can I play it on my Switch? I do it not It is only so. on PlayStation and PC. Okay. Yeah. I have a um, PC. So, yeah. Um, and uh, it's not... It's an older game, so it's not, like, super high requirements to run. You don't need, like... A fucking four thousand dollar computer or whatever. So, um, but uh, I'm actually playing FF Seven Remake on the PS Five right oh, now. Okay. So like we're both playing Final Fantasy. Yeah. And one of the little minions you can have, they have a little tiny Tifa that will run around oh. behind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can get like a yeah. I was uh going to turn in some quest and this this guy ran by me and he had a little tiny Tifa following behind him and I was like, hey, look, look at this. Imagine she was playing soccer. <laughs> FIFA Tifa. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't know. No. <laughs> but I love this game because it's, I don't know, it has a lot of, um, I can be a crafter. I don't have to fight if I don't want to, mm. which is super awesome because, like, I've LARPed forever. And I know LARP and video games is separate. You know that. But, like. I don't like having to fight. I don't want it to be a requirement, and it's not. I could just pick flowers, mm-hmm. and that's totally cool, and then people are going to pay me lots of in-game money to buy the shit that I make. I make like 100,000 gil a day. Yeah, Because they just want to fight. Yeah. You know, they don't yeah. want to yeah. have to pay for this stuff. Yeah, I will go and collect all the things while I'm listening to a bomb-ass podcast or audio book. And then sit there and grind out all these other little things, put them up onto the marketplace, and be like, "All right." And then I'll go and give that money to my guild, and we'll uh, we bought a house. That's amazing. <laughs> that is. And really so cool. now I'm like decorating our house and everything, and we can raise chocobos. And so one of my next goals is to change the color of cheesy poof. I'm, I'm sorry. Nice. Oh, that's the name of your chocobo. Yeah, yeah, my chocobo's okay. name uh, is Cheese Poof. Cheese Poof away. <laughs> I, I will say this, um, uh, you know, as compared to WoW, because I have about 
I don't know, 16 years on WoW. Right. And uh, I'd say a year and a half on 14, but the the number one thing you'll notice immediately is the community is so, so much easy. less toxic. Mm-hmm. Like, we were running a dungeon the other day, and because uh, whenever she gets to, like, a hard dungeon or whatever, usually myself and or Don will come in with our, like, level 50 characters mm-hmm. or whatever, and then That's we'll how the I thing. play WoW. The passenger princess me through this dungeon. Yeah. That's how I play and, WoW. And, like, I... I haven't played the game in forever, even though I have a high-level character. It's been years, so, like, I'll, I don't know the dungeons. And we'll be like, oh, man, you know, uh, I don't know where to go. And they'll be like, oh, man, it, it's over here. It's fine. Or or we'll fight a boss and, like, we'll die. And they'll be like, oh, no, you got to do this. Whereas, you know, in WoW, people just leave. Like, they'll just be like, oh, no, fuck this tank. He sucks. Mm-hmm. And then Yes, there's a the, lot of unspoken rules that people mm-hmm. people have in Final Fantasy that I, I just... I, I, it's just really nice. If yeah. there's a little sprout beside your name, like just two little leaves, that means that either your character is new or you're new. Yeah. And yeah. so pe- if you have a sprout, like you love this sprout. You don't want it to <laughs> go away. You want it to grow. And so they're, they'll randomly just give you shit or oh. they'll help you through dungeons. They'll tell you how to do things. Like it's the community is just a whole lot nicer. I played yeah. WoW for like a grand total of a week and I was like, these people are bastards. I hate it here. <laughs> they are. I mean, it, the community yeah. is terrible for what My Warcraft. husband is the worst. He leaves me all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, WoW, like, I don't know. It, it just never connected to me. But Final Fantasy, I just, oh, it, I'm, I am addicted. I loved Final Fantasy, the video games, well before all this. Like, mm-hmm. but. And, and, I mean, it is like a Final Fantasy theme park in a, in a way. Like, they actually have, like, Costa del Sol in the game. The Golden oh, Saucer Yeah, yeah the Golden there, Saucer is so. there. And right now they're having a, um, at the Golden Saucer, you can go to it and you can run little things for Fall Guys. Fall Guys. Fall Guys. It's like a cross-promotional thing. Like, fall yeah, guys. Oh, so, okay, so okay. basically you can go with your Final Fantasy character and play a Fall Guys layout. Hmm. I fucking suck at that. But my <laughs> guild was, like, really super awesome because I, they all wanted us to have the same emote, but I'm, like, really super no, new, and they know that I don't do the fighting thing. And so they're like, okay, she's crafting, but we want her to have this emote. And so they sat there and went through this thing, like, 10 to 12 times until I had enough points so that I could get the same wow. emote that everybody else had. And it's just like that's an example of people that you just randomly meet here. It's a good community. Yeah, it it's is, a really yeah. good yeah. community. Uh, the other day, I because I do, I do want to progress in the storyline, and in order to do that, you do have to do the dungeons, which I, I don't like those. But if you tell people at the beginning that you're new... Uh, like, they wait and basically just hold your hand and tell you how, like, the this boss is going to do this. When mm-hmm. you see him do that, get onto this plate and stay there. Like, they give you that advice. And if you die, like, they don't get pissed at you. You just go back and they're like, hey, it's okay, we're going to get it this time. And then, like, when you do get it, they have the, like, little celebration emotes and stuff. And <laughs> everybody's, awesome. like, having a party at the end. And it's, I don't know, it's it's really exciting and happy and I love it. And I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, very interestingly, and, and this won't surprise anyone, uh, her guild, uh, she's like, I got in this guild, and everybody in the guild's a Lalafell, and and they're they're all girls too, and blah blah. blah. <laughs> and like, she gets in the Discord, and she is the only female in this yeah, guild. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I get in there, and I'm like on the. Uh, I was like, so we have a Discord, and they were like, uh, yeah, here's the link, and I was like, there was some hesitation there. What was that about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I get in it, and, and then like, yeah, there's like a couple of German guys. Um, there's like. Uh, he's either Australian or New Zealand. I don't know, but there's a difference, and I didn't want to pick the wrong one, so I didn't say. Um, And then there's, like, a British guy, and then there's this guy from Texas that's got, like, super deep voice. He could totally, like, I would like to hear him sing, you know, that type of deep voice. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. super nice. Um, But, yeah, it's all dudes. And I was like, y'all lied to me. And they're like, you really are, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Never been asked for feet picture, have they? No. Okay. They're all sweethearts. I get pictures of their kitty cats, though, and I send them pictures of my cats. Yeah. Uh, the whole fa- the whole thing, like when she was like, "They lied to me." Not one of the not one of them was a girl. I was like, "Yeah." When you came in the Discord, there was probably a side channel that was just like, 
it's an actual girl. What am I going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time this ever happened. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any lows? Uh, video game lows? Yeah. Because I know it's like those two and like Baldur's Gate is really it. Uh, Baldur's Gate. I, I enjoy Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate is a uh, challenge with Oz. <laughs> so I love Baldur's Gate. I think it's great. Astarian is a super great character. I love him love so much. Uh, Caleb killed him in our playthrough, though. So. Shut the front door. We, got four, we have four players, so we don't yeah, need yeah, the so companions. That's fair. And he bit me. so I. Oh, st- yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I staked him. Stab him. Yeah, we also don't have. <laughs> we also don't have Gale in our playthrough because Don killed him. That's disturbing. I mean, he got he gets stuck in a rock. What what good is he? I, I mean, Gale. I don't really like Gale that much uh, anyway, so it's all right. Gale can stay in the rock. <laughs> um, but I I like I liked I like BG three. I like I like it. I haven't really played any other. Yeah, video but play, games. play the Gollum game. Oh God! Or James is one. trying to get me to play Fortnite or Final uh, uh, um, or Minecraft, but I'm like, nah, nah. I'm, <laughs> I gotta make this robe so that I can sell it and and buy some feed for our chocobos. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> can't. <laughs> chocobos gotta eat, man. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> Lauren, what you got? Um, I played this game. I think it's Switch. I don't know if it's doing anything else. It's called Wildflowers. Oh, that sounds adorable. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's a story game. <laughs> and um, you, like, move to this town to help your grandma. She's secretly a witch. Um, but I know. And then you have to meet all of the townspeople and have a conversation with them. Are and they then, all witches? Um, No, but, like... <laughs> They have, you have to get in a relationship with one of them, and, like, there's werewolves, and there's, like, a vampire, and then they have lots of LGBTQ couples, and you can do that. Um, It's just really, really good. And then, like, after you meet all of the little townspeople, and you start flirting with your little friend that you're going to pick, then that it, like, turns dark a little bit, and you get to learn spells and spell casting and things like that, and there's, like, a circle, and, like, it's just really, really cute story game. Aww. I loved it this year i played it on my flight to england and on my flight back it literally kept me sane um, it was so fantastic and um kept you from going stairs mode yeah because i had food poisoning on the way there oh. so literally literally saved my life on the way there and then on the way back i just put like the harry potter movies on and played um for the way back but um what else did i play this year I played a lot of wow um it is what it is. With are, wow. are you playing on the 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 no, instant no, death or whatever? No, no, I do okay. not play on the no death server yeah. at all. My my husband has been playing it since it came out. It's, like, it's a new mode. If you die with that, that's it. Delete your character. What? Yeah, no. yeah. 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 I don't want to do that. He had a level mm-hmm. forty nine uh, that he lost tonight, um, and I'm just like, no, thank you. If I die, <laughs> I want to go back to New Gardenia. Don't don't kill me. No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, it's instant death, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do not play on that mode. Um, played a lot of Hogwarts Legacy. That took up the beginning of my year. Um, what house were you? Ravenclaw every time. Same. Yes. Yay. I'm not a Ravenclaw, but their gear looked cool, so, so that's what I They have the coolest common room. They do. I get Ravenclaw every quiz I ever take. I, got, I bought one chocolate frog in um, Harry Potter World. One. I was like... I'm not buying a bunch of chocolate frogs. I'm going to buy one and get one card to display. Guess what card I got? Ravina Ravenclaw's card. Really? I am like, I love everything Ravenclaw aesthetic. So yeah, I absolutely um, played a Ravenclaw. And I, I loved that game so much. But I did not finish it, like I said earlier. I'm like... 20% from finishing it for the most part. But I did like a lot of the things in it. It just... I don't know. I feel like the story... I don't think I'll ever finish my own personal uh, Baldur's Gate playthrough. Yeah. I think I'll finish it with them, but I probably won't finish it on my own. Played some Baldur's Gate, but um, I am stuck on the spiders, and you really kind of have to be, to play it through by yourself, you have to, like, have the right character to defeat these spiders. And I, of course, play the... um, 
I think I'm playing on the explorer mode. Yeah, and and I'm just not playing the right character or something. Like I even Baron playing my character struggled to to kill all these spiders. So I'm just not like shoot at the webs. Right. Like I don't know what is going on with us, but he has like beat the game. But yeah. for whatever reason, the way my character set up, the cutesy things that I picked or whatever, <laughs> like, he sucks on my character. So that's kind of like, I feel like with Baldur's Gate, you have to have an experienced video game player a little bit, even though it is turn-based. I think an experienced D&D player is more, uh, would be better. Like, because I know people that have played a shit ton of video games and are terrible at, at Baldur's Gate. Because they're like, oh, I have to think in this game. You know, mm-hmm. I can't just yeah, mash a, buttons and watch the enemy disappear. It's not a movie that has a, oh, I would get to walk now. It's, yeah. not, it's not a movie. Yeah. yeah, it's not Uncharted where I watch a movie for 15 minutes and then I shoot a few people and I watch another 15 minute movie. You know, so. Yeah, I just, I am not that skilled of a, like, player to to defeat, to, to get far enough. Yeah to enjoy this story. So, it, I would not call it one of my lows at all. But, um, definitely it was like a frustration, because I wanted to get to the story bits, the really good parts, you know what I mean? But I got so little of the story before I got to a point where I was stuck. Yeah. See, that's me with basically most video games. I just get annoyed with it. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to do this. And I'm still playing Animal Crossing, even though they didn't come out this year. I still play a lot oh, of it. Tons, I mean, you know, lots of people play Animal Crossing, for sure. For sure. So. How about you, Ace? Now that me uh, and Kay have talked about our fun, cute video games. <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting for the Hobbit one to come out. But oh, my that's, gosh. Oh, I'm going to be playing that, Is too. it 24, 25? Do they have a date? I don't think they have a date yet. I'm oh. ready. Yeah, um, I still need to a play... Cozy Hobbit game. <laughs> I know, and I hope they release it on the Switch, because, see, the reason I like to play on my Switch is I like to get on my blankies, I like to light uh, my candles, I like to lay in the bed, prop my arms up on my little um, pillows, and then, like, zen. Girl, you should see... Uh, like, I'm going to have to have somebody take a picture of me when I'm playing Final Fantasy. That's so me. On your laptop? So have the uh-huh. blanket yeah, around I'm and have the headphones <laughs> on and... Like, just, just her face that's sticking out. And, <laughs> and then her fingers. And she's got a, we both have the trays for the bed, you know, so she's got, oh, like, nice. drink, laptop. I know. don't even have to, like, pick my hand up to drink. I just go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I want the, it's on my Christmas list, the the Kindle light thing and the clicker. So you can lay in bed. It has an arm that holds your Kindle above your head, and you have a clicker that turns the page. I wouldn't trust that at all. I'm yeah. so afraid yeah. that will fall on your noggin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for, but it's a neat concept. For, oh, yeah. For someone that loves hardcovers, that is a terrifying <laughs> concept. There are books in here that I'm pretty sure would give me a concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would well, no, it's your me. Kindle only. Well, yeah, I know. I'm okay, I'm like, <laughs> no, yeah. we're not putting, like, a way of king <laughs> yeah. on this thing and open it old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah I, uh, go ahead, Ace. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, yeah, so I've, uh. I started the year uh, playing uh, Hogwarts Legacy, which I had a, a really unique experience because I, I'm, I don't know anything about Harry Potter. Uh, so, yeah, it was a really unique experience for me. I, I thought it was a pretty fun game. I didn't get uh, super duper far. I got, uh, I probably put a good 15 to 20 hours into it before, like, something else caught my attention. But uh, I have to go back to it sometime because I, I enjoyed it. It's it's good. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I don't know if anybody else uh, did as much I as I did. I didn't play it, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh. I wanted to, but I haven't. What well, house are you? Uh, they, the the weird fucking hat <laughs> g- gave me, uh, uh, Slytherin? Sly- Slytherin? I, Slytherin? I, I believe that. I could um, see it, yeah. So then, did you do a dark playthrough? Like, did you make like Slytherin esque choices? Tell me is about that bad? your character. No, no, okay, no. Okay. no. Okay, so Slytherins are not bad. This is a common exactly this is a common thing. The, lots of dark wizards come from Slytherin, but that does not mean that all Slytherins are bad. Okay, they are ambitious and they are proud. Yes, but they uh, they are not evil. They okay. can be evil traits, but that doesn't mean that they are evil. And and you know what? If you are evil, it's totally fine. It's the evil error, <laughs> and I'm here for it, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's like when you find out that Walton Goggins is playing a character, you're like, they don't have to be a racist, <laughs> but they probably are. It's like that. Right. 
But not 100%. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. 85 or right. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say I'm doing like a evil, but morally ambiguous playthrough. There you go. Yeah. 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 That's definitely a slender uh, playthrough. How about, <laughs> what about your low? Is there a really low low? Um, As far as video games this year, uh, I was... Uh, I don't think it's a bad game, but I was disappointed with Diablo 4. Mm, same. Uh, I, I mean, I still I, I put a lot of time into it, and admittedly, the game doesn't get fun until you hit level 50, at least for me. So, like, you have to put a lot of time and, and, and grinding into the game before you can hit a point where it starts to feel fun. I've heard a lot of ranting about that game. Mm. Such a fucking slog. It, it is. It, it until is. You, before you yeah. get your mount, it's just yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. It's well, a slog. The have been very upset mm-hmm. about it. So. Yeah, I'd rather play Flappy Bird. I think. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, <laughs> thought about that game in forever. I played a lot of survival horror games. Those are my jam. So I played a lot of Dead Space remake, uh, Resident Evil Four remake. Uh, Love both of those tremendously. Watching but no. James and Timmy play Resident Evil Four on the headset on the VR, <laughs> yeah, was amazing. Top tier, awesome. Uh, but you haven't played Alan Wake too. Uh, no, no, I haven't. And uh, that's like the horror game this year. I mean, uh, that's, what the, that's what they say, right? But I didn't think the first one was really horror. Was that the guy with the clicky flashlight? Yeah, that's, yeah, the, that, guy, that's, that's the thing. Flashlight. Yeah. And, and maybe that's why, I'd like, because uh, I, I, I thought the first one was, was, it was fine. But I'm like, I, I shine flashlights. That's my purpose. <laughs> my purpose oh, is oh I my have God. the flashlight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a really cute, like, uh, thing that, like, little video I had to send it to you where they, they did, like, all the. Video game, the game of the year contenders like fighting each other, and yeah, the Alan Wake thing. He's like, it's really cute. Yeah, but I have to send that to me too. But we, uh, we saw. Did you watch the VGAs? Not, not a whole lot. They had that weird musical number that they did during it, it, and we were just like, I don't know what what it was, but it was very uncomfortable. I I heard it was a bizarre event. It was a very bizarre event. I I felt like Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered during it. (laughs) (laughs) Like. It was very odd. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but it hurts my eyeballs. <laughs> I'm excited for the Blade game, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That uh, I'm excited for that. Excited for Wolverine. Um, Light No Fires. It's from the No Man's Sky Light people. Light No so, Fires. Yes, So I'm like super uh, cautious, but like the trailer yeah. looks like just so good. everything that I yeah. want out mm-hmm. of a, like a next-gen game. Uh Spider Man Two was a big high for me this year. How do you uh, feel about it winning nothing? Do you think it's? it's are you justified? one of those people that was on my TikTok that was just <laughs> angry? Yeah, yeah. And, and no, I mean, like I I spent probably hour and forty minutes reviewing Spider Man Two, and you know, like whenever you hold something like underneath like a microscope like that, and you really just sit back and analyze it, I was like, it's a really good game. I ended up giving it like an eight point four out of ten. Mm-hmm. You know, really really good game. But I mean. I'm I'm not mad. First of all, okay, so it, it didn't win uh it didn't win a VGA. I'm like, well, okay, well, Endgame didn't win like any any major Oscars. And, right. You mm-hmm. know, so like what what does it really mean in the grand scheme of things? Yeah. And, and secondly, like there were just other good games this year. So uh I mean being nominated seven times I think says something all on its own merit. Uh I don't I don't need I mean Red Dead Redemption two I thought was amazing. It didn't win Game of the Year when it came out. Right. And uh, I mean, it made a shit ton of money, though. So yeah, I mean, it, it's not like uh, like Tears of the Kingdom. It's not like yeah, you know, it's not like they're upset. Right. You know, they sold like a bajillion copies. Yeah. you know, and, and Spider Man st- Two was the I think the highest selling PS Five game. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think that Sony is too terribly upset about it. Yeah. So I don't know why the fans are. There was a lot of like uh, comparison videos on TikTok where it would be like this super entertaining like cutscene from Spider Man Two, and then it would be like somebody sneaking over in, during combat during Baldur's Gate, and they're like, "How did this beat this for Game of the Year?" And I'm like, "Well, if you're a fucking moron, mm-hmm. then you probably would think that." <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a weird that's a weird comparison. It's a weird yeah. way to tell us you didn't play Baldur's Gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like. Yeah, that that's that's fucking bizarre, right? Because like, I mean, is is Spider Man two one of the greatest superhero video games ever? I I think that it's it, it's up there. You know, it's way up there, Morty. 
But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, do I think that it was going to be game of the year? No. I mean, Baldur's Gate 3, Baldur's Gate 3, I think, is just hands down. It was always going to win. And if it didn't, then then I, the VGAs, would, I, I would view them even lower than I already currently view them. Yeah. So the only thing that got right was who won. I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you have any lows? Um, yeah, so I mentioned like uh, Diablo 4 a bit. Um, man, it's, it's weird, right? Because like with the lows, I usually don't spend a lot of time on those. And I just kind of move on right. to, to what's next. Um, yeah, I played, I played a lot of games this year. Oh, I said, uh, according to uh, my PlayStation review, at least on PlayStation, I played 22 games this year. Uh, probably not that much to completion. Um, but, uh, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 got a lot of hours on that, which is saying something because I also have that on, on my laptop. Um, I actually sunk a lot of time into Diablo 4. Like I said, I had to get to level 50 before it got fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Spider Man 2 uh, got a, a, a large chunk of my time as well, especially like in the past couple months when it came out. Uh, but other than that, yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot that came out this year. Um, so I, as far as lows go, I don't really have, thankfully, a whole lot of lows. Um, I I didn't play enough of Final Fantasy 16 to really get a good verdict from it. I think I got like, I don't know if I, I think I just made it out of the tutorial stuff and then I got distracted with other things and just never went back to it. It's because it's a bad Terrible video game. But. Come over to 14. <laughs> I did not think it was bad. Uh, it, I mean, does it play like a traditional Final Fantasy game? No, but I mean, I just want to just see if it's going to be a good game. I'll introduce you to my chocobo. <laughs> uh, cheesy Poof? Cheesy Poof. Yeah, you introduced me to Cheesy Poof. And I have a chocobo you can ride on with me, like in a passenger seat. Oh, shit. And I'll sing, I can show he you the can, world. He can take you for rides. Yeah. That sounds like y'all would just have the best time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, we can be. get y'all friendship. Uh, friendship. Uh, that's right. Uh, it's a little hairpin. It yeah, increases yeah, your XP gain. Oh. Yeah, so we yeah. can get y'all up to level 25 really fast. Yeah. Oh, well, that'd be fun times. Yeah. I, I would totally if, play. If you do try it, let her send you a referral. You guys both get stuff. Cool, so, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, were you? Yeah, I mean, obviously Baldur's Gate 3, but you know. Yeah, I mean, it's Baldur's Gate, yeah. right? Um, like... In the year of video games, probably, um, in the last several decades, uh, what was it, 2018? Was that the year you said that was, like, right yeah. up there? Yeah. Um, I, I I can't tell you how over the moon I am that that type of game, that a traditional RPG that wasn't mm-hmm. made for DLC and live service and trying to keep you engaged or trying to keep you on fucking Twitch for whatever amount of time, or any of that shit. Pretty much everything I hate about modern video games is absent here. Um, I waited 22 years for this game to come (laughs) out. Um, Literally, Baldur's Gate 2 was, I think, 2001. Uh, Was it worth the wait for you? Yes. I don't want to wait another 20 for the next one. But, um, (laughs) yeah, I mean, for anything else to win Game of the Year would have been a sham. I mean... uh, the winners is the only thing they really got right, I think, at the VGAs, despite some of the trailers being incredible. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I it's easily Baldur's Gate 3 is the, the highest of highs. Like, I have mm-hmm. five different campaigns going. I will say that I recently played it on controller, mm-hmm. and um, that is awful. Uh, what a terrible experience You don't that like is. that controller? God, no. I can only imagine, like... Playing a spellcaster in like Act Three, how many of those fucking <laughs> wheels am I gonna have to scroll through? I'm gonna be like, oh, I need this spell, right button, right button, right button, yeah, right I, button, right button. I think because like I uh, I played Divinity. Divinity One and Two on on PlayStation, I had no problem playing Baldur's Gate Three on on a controller. I played it. With, I played a little Divinity. Yeah, mm. I, I played Baldur's Gate Three on controller with Jamie, and she didn't know about the jump and hide shortcuts. Yeah. Before I found those, I was like ready to log out, like <laughs> because it's like you got to press like four buttons to jump, and there's several places in Baldur's Gate where you have to jump multiple times. And it was oh, just, yeah, you didn't about the yeah. So once I the, found the shortcut, I yeah. was like, okay, okay, well I'll yeah. keep playing. One thing I did really love about it on split screen is how cool it is. Like 
and this is and this is why it won best multiplayer. I think is if if I come over to your house and you're playing Baldur's Gate, mm-hmm. I can pick up a controller, press the button, and immediately it pulls a little screen over for me, and I can make a character right there. You don't even have to stop playing. Yeah, I can make my character and just join you, and yeah. there's yep. no interruption. And when I leave, it puts all my shit in a box, and then I can pick it back right. up. I mean. That's just that's the way like the perfect way you want multiplayer to work, mm-hmm. and we've seen so many games botch that shit. Oh yeah, over yeah. the years. So I mean, most most companies purposely don't include couch co op anymore because they can make more money if they just make it so where you have to play online. Yeah, because that's two copies of the game. Each sold player one. must purchase the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the things you know with that, like it, you know. It, Fallout 76 is, like, an example of, like, such a just terrible iteration of that. Like, mm-hmm. can you imagine if, like, fall, instead of doing what they did, if they had just made a Fallout game but with that functionality? Yeah. It would have been received in the complete opposite oh, right, way. You know, right. that's what that's what people wanted when they were like, oh, we want to play Skyrim with our friends. We want to play mm-hmm. Fallout with our friends. That's what people wanted, not yeah, whatever not the what fuck got. that was. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> other highs this year. Um, I gotta say, uh, it's t- kind of early access, but it's free. Um, Lego Fortnite's the shit. Like huh. it just is. Lego it's, Fortnite. It's Lego Fortnite. It is nothing like Fortnite. It's basically. It sounds like two things I don't like combined. I know. So, I know. <laughs> I know. Same. 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 So basically, it's like Ark and Minecraft, just in Fortnite's engine. Hmm. So there's no elements really of Fortnite to it. It's it's a survival game. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of things they've done that are really cool. I think if they um, fix the like the item durability right now is real bad. Like you know, like by the time you like make a axe and then go cut down a bunch of trees, your axe is broken and then you got to fucking mm-hmm. go back and make another one. It, yeah, that if, was like Animal Crossing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they if they fix that part of it, I think it's gonna. I mean, I, I, obviously it's already blown up, but I think it'll have some long mm-hmm. legs if they can continue to make some little quality of life. Um, improvements. Uh, what else did I play new this year? Uh, I would say Diablo 4 is a low for me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to say that. Uh, I, I would have to include Starfield. I forgot about oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Starfield's a fucking low. Like, yeah. she can tell you. I was so hyped for this. I was like, when mm-hmm. I come back from Dragon Con, you're not going to hear from me for like two days. Yeah. I'm going to be playing Starfield. And then like two hours after I installed, I was mm-hmm. like, so I lied. So yeah, I'm already <laughs> back to Baldur's Gate yep. uh, because I literally the, every moment I was playing that I was like I could fucking be playing Baldur's oh, Gate yeah. right now. What am I doing with my life? They, they took away all the the best parts of like Skyrim and Fallout and gave us Starfield. Just imagine everything that you love about Skyrim and then everything you hate about Skyrim. Take away the whole love list. Mm-hmm. And that Starfield in space. So yep. Lydia's in space? <laughs> <laughs> all, all of the... Com- like, going from playing Baldur's Gate to playing that, like, all of the companions are just these fucking lifeless husks. Like, there are characters in Final Fantasy fourteen that feel much more like a real character than any of the companions in Starfield. They're just all just forgettable, empty nonsense. Every one of them. I uh, I was worried when they said, "Yeah, we have a thousand a thousand explorable planets," mm. and I was like, "Okay, well, I don't really need that that much, but okay." <laughs> and they come to find out that like ninety percent of them are just you know procedurally generated planets. Then and like only ten percent of the planets even have life on them. Oh yeah, and of those ten, like. Sometimes it's not even interesting, mm-hmm. or the things don't even want to fight you, or whatever. Or, or it's the same, literally the same shit you encounter multiple times. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they, and so it, it was extremely lazy. Like I would, I would have much rather just give me five like in depth, <laughs> rich planets that are full of different things for me to explore and see and do. Because that's the kind of the beauty of Skyrim, just getting lost in, in the world and finding these new things and stumbling upon these new quests or side missions. It's there's like, none of them. I yeah. hear a nerd root, and then yeah. you just <laughs> run away. Yeah. But there's, like, you can go out there and explore, but you just don't want to because you know there's not shit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just, there's nothing. It's like, like, literally the planets in Mass Effect 1 are more interesting. And most right. of them, it's like, you ride around in the Mako for yeah. like 40 <laughs> minutes so you can find this box. Right. You know, but... But there at least was a box. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wanted that box. Right. Um, 
But uh, <laughs> I just want to say, I fucking love video games. Just seeing how, like, excited that you two got mm-hmm. to talk about the game you were playing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and how wildly varied our interests were. Yeah, are. I was going to say. The, we're cozy. <laughs> yeah. That's well, what I like I about it. I play cozy, games. too. Like, I, play I've been playing a lot of City too. Skylines. That mm. game is very cozy. You make video games. It, yeah, I, uh, uh, me and Dylan are, well, and you, oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, so uh, I actually yeah. got Ace into uh, Mad Game, uh, Mad Games Tycoon 2. Yeah. So good. It's a video game about where you run a video game company. All right. How cool, kind of like uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I played a lot yeah, of that. Very much, yeah. Have you played Planet Coaster? No. Oh, you need to get that shit. It's, it's like the best version of, so like, the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon got super fucking corporate, and they came out with a new game that sucked. So a bunch of the devs left, and they made Planet Coaster. They also have Planet Zoo, which is very cozy. Yeah, where Ooh. you can run a zoo. Animals? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so, those animals yeah. got something. <laughs> yeah, definitely check out both of those. Like, they're, they're not new, uh, so you can probably get them both on, like, a steep discount right now. But, yeah, like, Planet Coaster I wonder is if I can shit. play them on my Switch. Um, She's like, I gotta have this. Switch. I don't know, but uh, one thing I can tell you: they, the old roller coaster tycoon games, they actually you can actually play those on the shelf phone now. That's how old those are. Wow. So yeah, but um, yeah. Uh, to avoid us being here for fourteen hours, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll wrap up my video game part, and we can talk about some books. books. The whole reason I've sat here for three hours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, um, I have the least experience in this topic of everyone here but it is 2023 so i would be remiss if i didn't mention that it's the year of sanderson it's the year of sanderson and some of my highs are from the year of sanderson same yeah Yeah, same um out of the like seven books that i read this year i think he was five of them so uh (laughs) yeah because uh yeah so uh because i read we did Superman, uh, All-Star Superman. Yep, yep. Uh, we reviewed that. But, uh, yeah, everything else was, like, Star Sight, White Sand. White Sand. Mm-hmm. And then the um, the, secret, uh, the Secret Projects. So, um, the last of which was just, I mean, blew me away. I've never read any kind of book that was paced like Sunlit Man. Uh, we were talking about that at dinner. Just, like... It was like um, uh, I compared it to that uh, Jason Statham movie Crank, where like he oh, had to yeah. keep his adrenaline going or he right. would die. Like that's how the book. Is. Yeah, you stay yeah. like. There's no downtime. Yeah. It's just like the the shit opens with like an execution and then gets crazier. Like constantly, there's. I'm no I'm reading downtime. it before the end of the year. No so. break. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's like two weeks. I know. Oh, I've yeah. got okay. about six books. I'm gonna finish in oh. the next two weeks. Yeah, and it's Same. on that Man. list. Yeah, they they both. Yeah, yeah, but. But, I mean, um, I, I don't think it's going to be your favorite. It was my favorite, but it's just because it's... It was up there for me, but it was not my favorite. Oh, you did read it? I have yeah. read it, yeah. Okay. It's Cosmere Wet Dream. You'll though. like it, but you're going to have a hard time um, putting it down because of how fast-paced it is. Like, you're yeah. going to want to finish it quickly. Yeah. Because the book makes you want to finish it quickly. You cannot, like, if you put it down, he might die. You yeah. got it. <laughs> I completely <laughs> get that. Yeah, it... Uh, but I w- it is absolutely a, a Cosmere love letter. Like, it's just all these little intricate things, you know, where it's just like, uh, we're going to have people from this planet show up, and, like, this is going to happen. And it just has all these little Cosmere kind of things in there. And it was... Brandon Sanderson himself has said, you can read it without having read other Cosmere books. Uh, I don't say <laughs> this could. often, uh, because usually... He's right. Uh, he's not. He's very wrong on this one. If you want to have the whole experience and mm-hmm. actually grasp a lot of it, especially who the uh, main character is, you're going to want yeah. to have read all the Cosmere books. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I, I would say bare minimum, you have to have read all of Stormlight and the Stormlight novellas. Um, bare minimum. But I would personally recommend that you have read all of it because um, there's, the I mean, there's Alamancers, know. there's... Like, people from Threnody, there's Shades. Like, there's all this crazy shit in it. And, I mean, and the main character is a, is from Stormlight, so. You're going to have to tell me who the main character is, because I don't know if I'm going to get it. You know, sometimes I They'll don't. They'll say his name directly. Oh, okay. Yeah. They yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is it, it's one a of Bridge my... 4 member that you'll, that okay, you'll know. Okay, it's a Bridge 4 member. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So. I'm excited now. Yeah. You got me excited about the book. It's Yeah, it's something else. But, I mean, um... <clears throat> 
you know, you, me, and Tress were both amazing. I mean, all of them were, and not, not to mention the books themselves. You um, know. The books themselves are, uh, if especially if you got like the the leather, the, the super special edition ones. Mm. I got. It. They are yeah. some of the most beautiful books that I have seen. Like mm-hmm. there is a lot of art, um, and not just the the books have art in them, like which is awesome. Like they had a uh, really well art pages and then the books themselves are a piece of art like it is beautiful Mm -hmm. especially tress tress's book i think is the prettiest yes that's what i got one of my christmas presents one Mm -hmm. one of the things i really loved about it is in tress they go to the different oceans and the oceans in are 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 not filled with water they're filled with spores deadly spores (laughs) and um they're different colors, right, in the different oceans. So as they travel in the book to the different oceans, the like they have these like little like vines and stuff at like you know around the pages, and they also have like the page numbers. Well, like the the colors will slightly change, at and so like when they were going from like this ocean to the next one, it'll be both colors, and then by the time oh, they get there, it'll, it'll be, be that color. Yeah. yeah, and like it's just those little details like that. I mean, I lo- like I loved all three of them. Um, they're all beautiful books, but like Tress to me, that Dragonsteel edition, probably the most beautiful book that I've ever seen. I mean, it was, it, it's tremendous. All three of them are just are really well done. But uh, as far I as the presentation, read it yet? But the Frugal Wizard, um, its pages like I flipped through the book itself, and it has like little uh, animations, basically. Yeah. Around oh, the bottom. Yeah. And so, yeah. like, you'll turn the page, and the little character that's at the bottom will be like have slightly moved and be in a little different position and stuff. So it's like, how cool! Oh, yeah, it's really cute. It's attention to detail. Uh, yeah, I really love the concept of these them doing these special dragon steel editions, and I hope they keep doing it this way because they're not leather bounds, right? Like, they're they're normal book covers, but just they're like premium hard covers yeah. where the art is. It's not a the dust cover like the art. So is they're more affordable on board. Yeah. because those leather bounds. I wanted to get the Way of Kings, and it was two hundred dollars. Yeah, and I was like, I cannot justify when my list of want, book wants is this long, two hundred dollars for a solitary book. I just can't justify it. I'm probably gonna drop two fifty on all ten of those. Fortunately, I will have most of the rest of my life to do it. So because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's only written. Well, he's written five of them by now. I think he's finished with five. Do you have the Mistborn leather rounds? I have all of them except for Well of Ascension, and that is not a coincidence. Got it, got it, got it. Every time I go to buy one, it's just like, eh, well, uh, which one do I want today? And that has never been the (laughs) one. But I I am going to eventually, I want them all. Uh, I want Elantris, too. It's very pretty. Oh, the Elantris look beautiful. The thing about the leather bounds, not only are they minimum 100 bucks, like that's what they start at, but the... They're so nice that you don't want to read them. Like, the pages are like those, like, you know, like the expensive Bibles? Yeah. They're yeah. like that. I mean, I've showed them to you. Yeah. Like, but with the Dragonsteel ones, it's like, okay, this is a beautiful book. But I could sit here and read it, mm-hmm. and it's fine, you know, so. Yeah, I agree. I did read Warbreaker in the Leather Bounds. It's amazing, yeah. It, I think, enhanced the experience and made it one of my favorite books of all time. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. For sure. Uh, I don't really have any lows, right? Because... Uh, you read seven books. We not, not Yeah, and it's just that if there was a low, like, you would read it first and tell me it sucks. And then <laughs> I would not read it. And that's my system. That's why I didn't read the Paolini sci-fi. Yeah. Right? So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I really loved All-Star Superman. But by um, the way, for most people, seven books in a year is a lot. Right, but for me, I'm just like, yeah, I did fucking terribly. <laughs> You know? No, you did, you did fine. You yeah, did fine. everybody reads at their own schedule pace. Yeah, I mean, everything. that's a low number for you me, You read though. seven books, mm-hmm. and you enjoyed all seven books. That's, that's true. like, super yeah. awesome. I read 118 books, and I would say probably 35 to 40 of those books can jump off a of bridge yeah. and die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if we're Jeez. going percentages, I'm... Uh, oh, yeah. You're doing but, 10 for 10. But that <laughs> is because I have you guys. <laughs> <laughs> And I go, Ace, I want to read a graphic novel. What's one I could just pick up off the shelf? And he'll go over to one of these and be like, you should take <laughs> this. And he'll give me, like, Hush, for example. And it'll become my favorite, like, graphic <laughs> novel. Uh, this is the first year I got to hand you a graphic novel. Right. And be like, you should read this. It's amazing. Yeah. 
You're and also I, I did, and it was. You and I are the only people at this table of red, white sand. So. Yeah, the, I have started white sand, but oh, I, I got distracted yeah. and I haven't gone back to it. I see. Um, I feel privileged, I and I look down upon you two from my high horse. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will concede to you. You can, so you can. Um, oh, talk oh, books. my my time to talk about books. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I've read 118 books. This year, I'm probably going to finish out around 130, I think, probably. probably. Um, I, I tend to finish anywhere from four to six books a week. <sighs> yeah. Um, I, I love I love reading. But, see, a lot of that uh, also is audiobooks, mm-hmm. which to me is still very much reading. There's a yes. debate on whether or not that is reading or not. Well, no gatekeeping. That's it reading. absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. And so, a lot of the times when I'm, like, playing Final Fantasy and I'm going around munching rocks or picking up flowers or whatever, uh, I'm listening to an audiobook. And so, that's the way that I've been getting through, um, which one am I on? Oathbringer. Um, I'm listening to Oathbringer right mm. now. Uh-huh. And then... Lauren's favorite? Uh, no. Lauren's no. least favorite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's going to be on my list. Or, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot of the books that I listen to are audio. I I, I, I love audio. I like to read the, the book first and then listen to an audio because you'll get a whole lot more inflection where you did, your brain didn't give that, like, certain lines or something. And mm-hmm. then you'll listen to it and you'll be like, oh, my gosh, this means, like... They'll emphasize a different word than what you did when you read it. And Pronunciation it on fantasy novels. Eight. I've read eight books. I forgot about Soul Eater. Oh, you did read Soul yeah, Eater. Yeah, you just reminded me of that. Because the audiobook narrator for that is a really uh, fucking Okay, good. so um, one of my favorite audiobook series that I've gotten into, actually, I ra- also read this year, was uh, the Monstrous series by Lily Main. It's smut. So, if you're gonna... It's monster smut. It, it's monster, monster smut. smut. I love mm-hmm. myself a good smut. Um, but, you know, it's a, also a really good story, which is a requirement for me, because if it's just, you know, smut, yeah. then it's... I I don't... My porn's gotta have some story. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I 100% agree on that one. So... The smut is also important. The, for the oh, record. right. Yeah, yeah, it's also important, but it's... Yeah. Yeah. There's been many times where she's been like, they said this was smut, but it's not. It's really not. <laughs> it's really not. Mm-hmm. If, if it fades to black, that's not smut, my friend. Uh, that's yeah. PG-13. <laughs> Let me show you smut. Exactly. <laughs> um, but do you have any issues listening to it on Audible or whatever? The smut? Um, It depends on what it is. Now, Lily Main, um, her books, I will listen to those on audio, uh, Audible, because the actor who does the reading he is top tier amazing um he gets a louisiana accent down without it sounding disingenuous Mm. and to me a southern accent of any kind is super hard to mimic Mm -hmm. without it sounding like you're just making fun of somebody yeah um and he was actually very good at it and there are seven six books that have been translated to audio uh, from that series, and all six of them have the same guy, and they're all really good, um, and it's I like, enjoy them. It's like Skyward for me, where it's like, I with that book, I read the first two-thirds of it, and then I she'd been talking the audiobook up. I listened to the rest of it, and I feel like for the next one, I might just go straight to the audiobook. Um, Skyward series is the same way. Like The narrator is so, so good, good mm-hmm. at getting into the character's voice, because those are in a first person. Mm-hmm. And and so it's very much like I, you know, did this. Right. And so, like, they embody that main character, like, the singular voice so well that the audiobook just really yeah, enhances it. Yeah, see, I experience. read the third one of, uh, what is that one? Um, um, Cytonic. Cytonic. I read Cytonic. I haven't listened to it, but I listened to the first two. And I wish that I had listened to your Cytonic, too. I'll probably go hmm. back and listen to it again. But, no, listening to Smut doesn't bother me if it is... If it is something that I have read, and I know that it's something that I have enjoyed previously, if it's just, I don't know if I can't, if I don't have that preview, then I don't really want to listen to it, because with uh, with 
books, I have like a little bit of a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why there's a skip button for me on a lot of TV shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because seeing and hearing something changes your perspective Mm -hmm. and makes it more realistic. And so, yeah, there's some things I just cannot listen to, but I can totally read it. That's the way I am. That's why I prefer my smut in book form rather than audible. However, but your blackbird and you have to listen to it. <laughs> I prefer certain books in audible form. Yeah. Yep. I really enjoy a lot of Sanderson's books in, in audio. I have not done a single Sanderson oh. in audio. Oh, so, you'll, you'll, like you'll like it. Michael Kramer and Kate Reading are both incredible. And then um, I haven't actually listened to it yet, but when Dylan got to Elantris, he's done them all in audible. And... Um, the one thing that sucks about Audible is you miss Chris's notes at the end. Like, mm. uh, but uh, so when I'm talking to him about Chris, he's like, "Who?" And I'm like, "She does all the, you know, Ars Arcanum at the end." And he's like, "Uh, what?" <laughs> you know. So, um, but uh, was that Chris Allen? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, so uh, they're both really good. But when he got to Elantris, there's like a a Almost dramatized like, like yeah, there's him. a dramatized where like each mm-hmm. character is like played by a person. That's the way Empire's um, soul soul is. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and you did, did you listen to that? I one? loved Empire Soul. Uh, em- yeah, Emperor Soul. Yeah, Emperor Soul. Yeah, yeah, he won um, some one of the crazy awards for that. Oh, I, I do really have good. high standards when it comes to audiobooks. If they sound like they're monotone and they're just droning on, mm-hmm. I have to cut that shit off real yeah. quick. I can't do that. Like, no. If I want to be in high school again listening to Miss <laughs> Brown talk, I, I'll go back to Thompson. I'm not there anymore. Sorry, Miss Brown. Love you. Um, but She's got to be like 97 now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, that's one thing, though, that... Um, what, if there is any downside to Michael Kramer, his voice is so damn sultry, you know? Mm. I could, like, if I lay down listening to a Stormlight book, I'm going to sleep because he's he's just, his voice isn't monotonous, but it's soothing. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. just like, I got to be like, you know, in the car <laughs> or whatever, because otherwise, I, if I if I lay down and put that on, I'm out, oh. you know? He's going he's gonna to talk me right into some sweet dreams. <laughs> So I read 118 books so far. Um, most of the things that I have read have been fantasy or um Is that sci-fi. your favorite genre? Fantasy? Yeah, probably. You got um, to the Mossverse this year. You did. I'm so excited for yeah, you on that one. I did. I did. I started... Um, a Court of Thorn and Roses, right? A Court of Thorns and Roses, yeah. Akatar is, is super, super, super good. I enjoyed that. What book are lot. you on on that? The pink one. Um... <laughs> That's Wings and Ruin? Possibly. Okay. That's a pink cover. It's really I think it's Wings and Ruin. I will say, though, that it takes me longer to read a physical book than it does for me to read a uh, book that is on my Kindle. Um, Yeah. Because I can take that with me a a whole lot easier, and I won't have to worry about damaging the book. And so if life is busy and chaotic, which for us it always is. It is, it is. <laughs> my Kindle is a lot uh, more friendly. My Kindle has a name. Its name is Pattern. I love it so much. I love the name, after too. After the Sprint. Yes! yes. I, I named it Pattern after the Sprint. I'd say of my library that I'm building, 70% of the books on it I read on Kindle first. And then I purchased because I know that I like them. Also, hardbacks are up to like $30 a book. Yeah. So I'm not dropping $30 unless you're an author that I know. The Monster series, I just started buying them. I know. I'm bucks, sure Ace. your yeah. books are way more than that, bucks. Ace. <laughs> Comic books, they, they, their prices are heavily inflated now. But I'm I read talking. 150 So if I was yeah. paying $30 a book at that, 150 yeah. I would be broke. Uh, I'm talking uh, about, how I much do you think Sandman that? this year. Oh, oh, oh. that's in here. Yeah, that's in For here. Sure. Yeah. See, Sandman? Oh yeah, yeah, they're uh, behind Lauren. Yeah. yeah. Oh. How much do you Sam think Lauren. that Absolute Watchman over there would run? Uh, right actually, now? they just did a reprint of it, and uh, I, I checked it out to see what the uh, what the new updated price is. One fifty. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> the, um, I really like reading comics or um, graphic novels on Kindle Unlimited because oh, yeah. the way that they they do it is those. Zoom the in. Zoom in on each panel. Yeah, yeah. on each yeah. panel. And it's very user-friendly, and I appreciate that. Right. Um, 
Uh, I've read a couple of uh, mangas that way too. Oh, nice! And so it, it's nice. I I like I like that. Um, and again, it's easier to take with me and go. So it's yeah, it is. I yeah. I often think I save so much time and space if I just collect it digitally. Uh, but the goblin in me will never let that happen. So I can't, see, if I, can't I get really it. connected and invested in something, <laughs> mm-hmm. I therefore must own it in person. In multiple yep. copies. Yeah. Ask how many fourth wings I have. Yeah. So <laughs> I have, uh, like, I really, I read a lot of webtoons, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I have Heartstopper, and I have um, the, oh, gosh, it just, whoops, ran out of my brain. Um. The head used in Persephone. What it's like that? a boomerang. It'll come back. Lore. Lore. Yeah. yeah. Lore. 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 Yeah. I have, yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, have all of the lores because I just, I love, I loved those so much mm. that I got so invested in the stories that mm-hmm. I needed that. Oh, that's another one that Netflix has translated very well from story. Con- Heartstopper. Heartstopper was good. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that was this year. I think that was last year. I think they had a new season this year, didn't they? Or no? Uh, I think it's, yeah. No, 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 you're right, you're right. They did, yeah. they did do new season. Sophia right? watches it. So. Yeah. So what was your low? My low? Uh, okay, so I have a couple of lows, and one of them's going to be like, a dis- I'm sorry, Lori. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Oh, well, yeah, I have, okay. to, I have to run to the restaurant. So I hated Priory <laughs> of the Orange Tree. I wanted That's to like okay. it. It's I finished okay. it. I think, though, that majority, majority of the characters were dumb. <laughs> and if they had been a little smarter, a lot of the shit wouldn't have happened. And what's his name's best friend wouldn't have died. Spoiler: Dude's best friend dies. Yeah, yeah. If he hadn't been a twat waffle and had used his <laughs> noggin for half of a second, his best friend wouldn't have died. But he did, and that pissed me the fuck off. And then that was it for me for that book. Honestly, when they killed his best friend, <laughs> that's okay because one of my lows is by the same author. So. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, then another one was a couple of business books that I've read. Because uh, I don't just do fiction, I also will do stuff that's educational. I try to do like a little bit of a mixture, and uh, yeah, there is this one book that I read that this guy was basically like, okay, so the only thing that really reminds me of it is that that quote of Trump where he's like, "With the small loan of a million dollars," it was kind of like that, where this guy was just very set on. <laughs> talking down to you as someone who's starting a business or running mm. a, your own business instead mm-hmm. of actually giving you business advice. And the one, the business advice that he was giving you was very cliche. Uh, and I'm like, it. why am I even reading this? Like, I didn't finish it. I just didn't finish it. So bad. It's, it's <laughs> like why, uh, why Marjorie Taylor Greene's book isn't selling well. Because there's a wide delta between people who like Marjorie Taylor Greene and people who read books. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, but I would say I, I also really like uh, mysteries. I like a good detective series. Oh, yeah. I read some of those. And I, I like really detective romance. If that happens to you, those two can combine is like super gold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you should read Evolution. Uh, it is a mystery. It's always changing when no one sees. I. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Lauren. Um, I'm Don't like Kay. <laughs> I'm like Kay. I've read a ton of books, just an abnormal amount of books this year. Um, Do you have a number for us? Yeah, 150. Sheesh. Um, and counting. And counting, yeah. The year is not over. I'll probably read another six to ten before the end of the year. Um, some of my highs are some ones that were already mentioned, which is Warbreaker and Tress of the Emerald Sea. Tress of the Emerald Sea is probably my favorite book right now um out there it knocked priory of the orange tree out um you read most of the cosmere this year i did i read most of the Other cosmere maybe this what year. Wow. early mistborn you probably- read you, oh you i read- met mm-hmm. i read it with you oh yeah yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did an excellent review on you me i did oh, I, oh, that's right. I may yes, have been in the that. chat we do need to do that but the holidays i just knew it wasn't going to happen so we said after the first of the year we yeah. were going to jump on yeah. it maybe we'll do sunlit man or we'll yeah. pick something else um we should all get it on that sunlit man review. yeah I, for sure I, I didn't do it on my show because i was waiting on one of you to finish it 
Or maybe we'll do a podcast assemble on Sunlit. Well, maybe. and we well we got to do a Mistborn assemble. We're just waiting on Ace yes. to go through, his, you know, to finish his uh, second read through. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, absolutely. I already read it once, like I said, you know, many many months ago. <laughs> uh-huh. and, yeah, uh-huh. and now I'm just on my second read through, and so as soon as you know, work gives me time to do anything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, why actually, January. <laughs> We're yeah. waiting for January. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For At sure. this point. Yeah, uh, but no, can continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, Fourth Wing and Iron Flame both came out this year, which is so weird. Right. Right? The fact that a original book and then the sequel came out in the same year. That's some Sanderson oh, wow. shit right there. Um, Fourth Wing came out in April, and um, Iron Flame came out in November. So... I will say those are also very pretty books, especially the pages, the edges. I have three copies of Fourth Wing. One is the original gold... One is the holiday edition that is the black and red that matches my Iron Flame. And then I just ordered one for my birthday that is the United Kingdom Lilac Library print that is the most beautiful black and gold cover you have ever seen. Um, yeah, Fourth Wing kind of took over my life for a little while. Um, Let's see. It, I wrote a fan fiction that has 20,000 reads currently. Oh. Wow, that's amazing. Um, we talked about it all. Yeah. <laughs> We, we talked about it on Entertainment Evolved just a few weeks ago. You should check it out. Yeah. Um, so that became a huge part of my year, I guess, because two books in one year, plus the fan fiction. And then I just had so many highs, honestly. Um, yeah, there was a lot of good books that I read there this There was year. a lot of good books that I read this year. Some that, you know, weren't mentioned. I really liked Jody Picoult's new one that just came out. Um, it's called Wish You Were Here, and it is got to do with um, kind of the state of our minds and where we go when we're in that coma state. Like, I don't want to do too many spoilers, but um, there's an entire book, and then something happens, and there's a whole second book in this one book. And it is extraordinarily good. Um Jodi Picoult writes, she wrote My Sister's Keeper. Oh, okay. okay. She writes gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching, life-altering books as it is. Um, If you have never read a Jodi Picoult, I highly recommend reading her book called The Storyteller. And it changed my life when I read it when I was like 23. It changed my perspective on how I looked at human beings. Um, But so, for somebody who lived through, obviously, the pandemic and... I just thought it was brilliant because it does have to deal with the pandemic as well as the kind of state of our brains um, when we are in those medicated coma states. So brilliant, brilliant piece of work. Um, I could go on forever about my highs, but um, my lows would be, you said you didn't like Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I loved Priory of the Orange Tree, but she put out a prequel This year, called Day of Fallen Night, that I DNF'd at 70%. And for the fact that Priory of the Orange Tree was my favorite book of 2022, DNFing Day of Fallen Night, if you would have told me last year that I was going to DNF this book, I would have told you you were crazy. But it was the most rinse and repeat. The characters had different names, but they were the exact same situations. There was this queen and her lover. There was like, everything was the exact same. It drove me bananas. And I kept sticking it out because I wanted to stick it out. And I just couldn't anymore. Um, another hot take that I hated this year was the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. That is a super, super popular um, fantasy or sci-fi book that like, people are passionate about and love thought it was the slowest book i've ever read in my entire life i found that i disagree a lot with a uh, book talk yeah yeah, yeah. and I not have even an extra grind not even just book talk just people love this book in the real world too and i just could not get into it i didn't know what was wrong i thought there was something wrong with me but then it turned out that i think it's one of those that's in a trilogy and you have to like get through the first one to like join the second or something was not for me i thought it was slow and i'm all for world building but there is a point where it's too much and then returns 
world building sometimes. Yeah, and then I read my first Grady Hendrix book this year, and that is my low of my Hello? reading career. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I read the Final Girls Support Group. I remember you talking about that it was on your channel. The worst book I've ever, one of the worst books I've ever read. He is a man who writes books where women are the main characters, and he has no concept of the female mind at all. Not oh, even God. slightly. There were <laughs> there were moments that I took pictures of and screenshotted and sent to Caleb. It was like, yeah. do you believe this absolute <laughs> horse shit? So here's the thing that I've told uh, people where they're like, what is the female gaze like? You know, uh -huh. when they're like talking about books. And I'm like, Henry Cavill. Yeah. <laughs> like, he does it perfectly. Like, the man himself. Like, right. he's a nerd. He's super awesome. He's genuine. Yep. And then kind. you have like... The Witcher is still great. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, the video of him just on YouTube, no talking, building the computer. I don't want to talk about why it's my most watched YouTube video of the year, but we can just, you know, put that out there. Yeah, so like if, because that was my issue with uh, the book that uh, Christopher Poloni wrote, uh, To mm -hmm. Sleep in a Sea of Stars. It, he wrote it. From a female perspective. Uh, and it was awful. Got it. It was awful. And and this is another thing, too, uh, that I, I will just say. Men, please don't try to talk about a woman's period. Don't do it. Just don't. Just <laughs> oh don't. God. Please don't. There are so many things I would rather do, including gouge my eyes out, than reading most male-written smut. That, that's when I just was like, well, okay, this is it. I'm not reading this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I mean, I, I am like, you know... The, the number one writer of Brandon Sanderson's metaphorical dick. And I don't want to <laughs> read smut from him. No, thank no, you. No, thank no, you. Thank you. Like, like, I mean, you know. I, I have read a couple of good smut books that were written by. Oh, it can be done. Absolutely. Yeah, but I will say that those are LG, LGBTQ. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, not They're to go not... full Disney here, but if it's like a like straight, cis, white guy, I don't want to read their smut. Sorry, I just don't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like there's enough of that perspective out there already, like countless hours of it that it doesn't it doesn't need to be. We're just okay. Like you know uh, what was your favorite uh Amazon first reads that for this oh year? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. I would probably say why is this so Suddenly became an ASMR episode. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, That's okay. Yeah, I gave her a You go days. first, and then I'm going to think of it. Uh, so mine would probably be um, The Magic of Lost Objects. Mm. That one was really good. I, I bet you my favorite is going to be the one that I read this month, because I got Echo of Books as my Amazon first read. Now that is, you're going to like it. As yeah. Well. Yeah. I just got it, like, on December 1st, and... I feel like that's going to be my favorite. Nothing I, else is really standing out to me. Oh, um, the, this plate um, book. A girl who goes on a cooking competition. Um, Sadie on a plate. I think it's called Sadie on a plate. And she like goes on a cooking competition. That would be my favorite if it's not going to be Echo of Books. I think you'll like Echo of Books. I think the reason that I really enjoy The Magic of Lost Objects was because it, I read it right after... Um, my, well, Dad passed away in December, yeah. and I read it in January, and it was about um, this girl who reconnected with her estranged mom, and it was through the little things in life, um, mm -hmm. how she was able to do that, finding small things that reminded her of her mom, and it just really connected in that time. Oh, absolutely. And so I think that that was why that one has held with me as much as it did. That's yeah. such an amazing book title, too. I'm just like, damn, it's yeah. <laughs> you would think that it was like a like a magical thing, but no, yeah. it was just the magic of lost objects coming mm. across something that you know you knew you had, but right. then you find it again and it brings back that feeling that you had when it was important to you. Yeah. And it's not that it's not important now, but it's not it's not the highlight anymore. And then you're holding that object and it brings back those memories of of being a little girl, sitting with your mom, having her read you a story. Or, you know, going out with your dad, finding s magical things, and it's sure. just in this object that, you know, is in the back of your drawer that you you didn't think anything about. Mm -hmm. So, I, I that was a really good concept of a book, I thought. I love it. I will have to look it up. 
Yeah, but you're gonna love Echo. I, I it's on my to read before the end of the year, but I've got so many on that list. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, as we say all the time, uh, collecting books, reading books, and adding things to your TBR are three separate hobbies. Oh, How many yeah. times a week do I send you a video of something, and I'm like, I'm adding this to my TBR? So uh, often, at least twice. <laughs> so often, and then and then I'm only and, sending you the ones I think will connect with you. Yeah, and normally I look at it, and I'm like, <laughs> I should probably fucking read today or write one of the two <laughs> things, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm just going to play Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I'm sure it's not important. Ace, what you got, man? Uh, yeah. We're all so, going to stare at you uh, and act like we know what you're talking about. I was, I was going to say, man, like I could just make up a bunch of shit. <laughs> you yeah. could. We'd, 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 we'd be like, yeah. yeah. What was good in the world of graphic novels in 2023? Uh, yeah, so I'll tell you this much. Uh, White Sand was uh, tremendous. I've heard. Yeah. And yeah. that counts because it came out, that, I mean... I mean, it, it was supposed to come out. It was out. supposed to come yeah. out several years ago, I think. I, I gave them my money right. a long time ago, which, you know, because of inflation probably worked out in my favor. I but, think so. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, by the way, again, um, I know one of Brandon Sanderson's work that I believe you guys haven't read yet. So that's, you know, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. That, that is all cool. You had a gold cool star in the chart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, just. The Cosmonauts yeah. over here. Huh. We haven't read that one. There wow. was a, a, a few days where I had not read it and you had read that's it. That's right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really on my hell horse then. You had read Couldn't some. tell me shit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I came in here for the review of that with a fucking star chart. Like, it was. He did, yeah, yeah. It was. It was unnecessary, but, <laughs> but necessary. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I it, was a, it was awesome, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was uh, tremendous. That was my first uh, four year into uh, anything written by Brandon uh, Sanderson. So, so are you a Sanders slut now? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I, I don't know if I'm any kind of slut. Well, any kind of reading slut. <laughs> well, I was like, just the base root word. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am currently. I, I disagree, reading. actually, though. Uh, but hey. looking around this room, <laughs> I mean, if any particular, you know, fuck it. All right, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> irrelevant. Um, but I am currently reading uh, through Mistborn, uh, uh, trying to anyway, uh, whenever I get time. And uh, but that that has also been tremendous. But as far as like White Sands go, like I just uh, I uh, I really really enjoyed the premise. And I was a little concerned at first about one of the lead characters, uh, Kenton. I was, you know, kind of concerned that he was just going to be, you know, kind of your typical, you know, every man, young protagonist who, you know, goes through kind of the motions of a of a character of that nature. But trophy, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, but he actually uh, he doesn't, and like the story takes a lot of really cool twists that uh, I wouldn't expect. Like a lesser writer would have taken. Uh, an, an easier approach uh, sure. to result to get into some of these resolutions, uh, but Sanderson does it, doesn't. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that about him or not. Oh, no. oh yeah, I've yeah. I've heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just an inkling of yeah. an idea there. Yeah. He kind of knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, and, uh, and this is also where I, I don't know if that might be a spoiler. I don't know. Uh, Chris in there. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. No, I, I think mean, we generally know yeah. who's in what. Oh, I think I've okay. told them like that oh, it's okay, her okay. backstory kind Plus, of. spoilers don't affect me. Oh, okay. As yeah, someone with super bad anxiety, yeah. okay. spoilers <laughs> to me are like trigger warnings, basically. Oh, okay. Like, okay. give them to me. I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say, too, like, Chris Allah's other appearances in the Cosmere have been, so far, I, you know, you definitely won't say this way, like, other than her notes at the end of the books, it's been sort of a, oh, hey, this is a... You know, a, a, a certain, you know, uh, oh, this is Chrysala. It's like a, a cameo type thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, and this is a minor spoiler, but I'm going to go with it. In Sunlit Man, they actually have like, like, kind of like Newton's laws or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's like Chrysala's law of whatever. Oh, so, yeah. like, her as like a Cosmere like scientist yeah. has become that well known of a thing. Uh, and it's like way in the future. She's probably dead. We don't know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's that, it's that, co- it's really cool to see her like, Work kind of yeah, like you kind of could, like yeah, that. evolve and continue on. Uh, she was a really cool character, my favorite character in that story, actually. Uh, but I just I really enjoyed where it took us and like how Sanderson was able to uh, expose it without it feeling like you know you were just being force fed information. 
You know, so that's something that uh, is, is really important to me when it comes to world building is being able to espouse without it feeling like I am just, you know, reading somebody pinpoint all of the crucial information. Like, expose it to me through the eyes and married to the story and the characters is the way I prefer that happen. And, and he does a really good job of that. Uh, so that was definitely on, an, on the list of my highs. Um, again, I, if I had Mistborn finished, I'd be able to go ahead and, and exclaim that. But alas, here I am, and the book is still uh, uh, not completed. Um, as far as like other things on my highs, uh, I uh, read a uh, tremendous Venom run, uh, the Venomnibus, if you will. That's a lot to say. <laughs> it doesn't quite roll off the tongue. It, Not really, no. <laughs> I was over here like, I don't know. It's even on it. the spot. Is is yeah, Ven Omnibus. You know, uh, yeah. So it's it's just a great, great Venom title, and and yes. But anyways, um, that was a, a tremendous, very uh, very edge lordy. Uh, we get a very edge lordy villain in that. But it was such such a cool read to get like backstories on some of these symbiotes and, and where they come from and why they are the way that they are. And uh, more of a uh, redemption kind of for Eddie Brock. He's still kind of a kind of a shit bag, but you know, at this point he's a shit bag who has more merit to him. So, you know, it does a lot more of the legwork than the movies do. I was gonna say, what do you think about the movies? I think that the movies uh, are uh, <laughs> they, they are created and they are movies. They, they are there. They are there. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> Venom 2, the red one. <laughs> the red one, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think that uh, Tom Hardy uh, does very good with what he has, but I just wish that he wrote better. Got st- it. You know, yeah. Uh, are you fans of those, by the way? I have only seen the first one. Okay. So you I, I see anything Tom Hardy is in for the most part. Ah, uh, okay. I thought it had funny scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that's about the extent yeah. of, of of that. I like the I like the brief cameo of the gas station lady in oh, yeah. Into the Spider yeah. Verse <laughs> more than any in of the, the yeah. Venom movies. Yeah, and that's kind of wild, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and uh, you know, so I I kind of double dip, which is something that happens a lot if you uh, read and collect comic books. But uh, I have both uh, Venomnibus, and then I have this other book called King in Black. Uh, and, uh, Smith, matter of fact, if you look right behind K, you see, uh, the, that guy on the, on the cover, on the spine, I should say, his name is Noel, the symbiote god. That's a thick boy. It, he's, it's a very chunk boy book. Yeah. <laughs> very chunk boy book. Um, and he, he's, he's a very edge lordy, uh, uh, kind of villain existed before existence, you know, one of yeah. those type, type Noel guys. is a, a cool villain. Cool he's character. very cool. And uh, they're using him for uh, for Venom three apparently, so I'm very nervous. They're gonna mm. fuck, they're uh, gonna fuck it up. Yeah, but well, it can't be worse than Marvel's use of the All Black. That's that's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it could, but they have to yeah. really fucking try, <laughs> like actively try to be terrible. Well, well, Aquaman two is trying to uh, to beat out the Marvels for the lowest box office apparently. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, and uh, and in terms of like highs, I mean. Yeah, that was definitely one of my one of my major highs. I uh, had a, a really good time uh, reading uh, Batman and Ninja Turtles. Uh, I, that just is everything my childhood wanted. Nostalgic, you know? yeah. yeah. And, and now here it is in front of me in comic books, so I loved it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other uh, super major high that I have because th- there's several, but in terms of like my my biggest highs, the other one is another Batman book. It is uh, Batman, <laughs> Batman the uh, the animated adventures. I ha- I've been waiting on that book for uh, at this point years, and uh, so when it came in, I, I had to uh, had to grab it. So it's basically stories that take place within the world of the animated series. Is Paul Dini involved? He is. Okay, yeah. that was gonna be my f- yeah yes. first question. Yep, Paul Dini and Bruce Tim are are heavily involved in the creation of the book. Oh, Same well. guys nice. that made the TV show. Yeah, yeah. So that's. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, it's it's tremendous, e- excellent work. Are you reading Joker's parts in Mark Hamill's voice? Oh, you have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I do that with anything that Joker's in. He's automatically Mark Hamill. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, and Immortal Hulk is another excellent book. I've been waiting on that for years. Uh, it sold out. Actually, the uh, the first printing of that sold out within uh, hours, and uh, so I was bummed out. 
uh, but not really because that book was expensive as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then it came back in print. And I was like, fuck, I got to buy it now. Yeah, I was going to say, I see it on your yeah. shelf, sir. <laughs> so what happened? So, what happened was. Yeah. Uh, and, and as far as like the, the lows go, um, there's, there's really only one low that I got. And the funny thing is, I knew that this was a low going into it. <laughs> and this is a book that I, I had no intentions on ever buying. Because I don't need it, and I need the I need the space. You know, space is real estate, and uh, I'm, I'm running low on that. Did you buy that fucking Superboy book? I did not buy. It. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> it was like, uh, like, like just re- like overwhelmingly hated. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, yeah. But um, this was a book that was from my childhood, and you know, like nine year old me thought that the premise was cool. And then, you know, you grow up and you realize that literally everyone, myself included, thinks that it's, it's, it's universally hated. It's just not a good story. Uh, but I got it because it was 60% off. Uh, <laughs> we love a good market. Yeah. And it is uh, X-Men Avengers Onslaught. Uh, long story short, this is the story that was so bad, it sent Marvel into bankruptcy in, in the 90s. Oh, geez. <laughs> Onslaught a- is a, such a cool concept. It, it if, is. If we gave yeah. you a high-level overview of it, you'd be like, that sounds <laughs> right. amazing. Right. Has and then all the, the, all the ingredients. And yeah. It's so enough like, for a 60-second trailer. Mm-hmm. We like cooking. The trailer's good. The movie's terrible. <laughs> yeah, the movie's terrible. The trailer's excellent, though. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, yeah. So that that that's that's onslaught. Really, really cool premise of a bad guy. Uh, however, uh, the execution was was so poorly done, and uh, it comes right off the heels of a story called Age of Apocalypse, which was highly successful, and uh, Marvel really needed another win. Uh, comic books were in a rough state at that point. DC already had the backings of WB, so they were fine. Marvel had the backing of nobody at this point, and they were not fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, Onslaught uh, did, did not do well. Um, the the it was it, every, every kind of uh, negative connotation you may have about like superhero comic books kind of goes into Onslaught. Uh, and so yeah, it uh, it is notoriously known as a story that sent Marvel into bankruptcy. And and is the reason that they didn't own most of their characters, right? Yeah, because they had to they sell had to the sell rights. Out, yep, sell out the movie rights in order to. Yeah, so uh-huh. that's why like Sony has Spider Man, for instance. And yep. Why like Fox, Fox had, had X Men and Fantastic Four is because yep. that comic so bad. Yeah. That in order to stay afloat, they had to start selling <laughs> the movie rights to their characters. Uh, yeah. And uh, then we get guys like Ike Perlmutter who comes in and and he, <gasps> I mean, and to his credit, he gave us Blade uh, pretty quickly. But some motherfuckers always trying to ice yeah. skate uphill. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, definitely a low for me. I had to like reread it just to just to double. Is is it as bad as <laughs> I remember this being? Man, this is so nostalgic. It's so so bad. So yeah. Well, we have been here forever. So I think yeah. we should we should very quickly like talk about what talk we're about what we're excited for, for any category, and then we'll 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 GTFO. Um, so, um, yeah, you can go first, actually. Uh, the thing I'm excited for next year is my convention tour. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is going to be? Uh, I'll be going to Savannah Amazing Con, uh, the Goblin Market, Momo Con, and then hopefully Dragon Con. Um, and I think I'll be doing... Soda City again. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you left a very important convention. Yeah, one list. that you're going to that... <laughs> For the first time, both of us. Track. track. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one at the end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so we're going to Dragon Steel as well. That's right. Yeah, that is next year. Mm, that yeah. is super fun. I think that's because it's still so surreal. It hasn't really yeah. fully set in that we're going to go there. And we're going to have to go back because they're building like a Sanderson land. <laughs> they <laughs> are. And it, won't, and it won't be done <laughs> yet. I yeah. watching that while we were stuck at McDonald's. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, it was so awful. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the main thing that I'm really looking forward to. And then just continuing to explore books. <laughs> and I know um, 
that uh, you probably forgot about this one because your excitement is just seeping out of you, but uh, Rings of Power Season 2. Um, I know that. <laughs> wow. I don't get that look very often. <laughs> I hate everything that is that show. He, he, he made for... House of the Dragon Season 2. The costumes are lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the costumes are lovely. <laughs> What are you looking forward to, Lori? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Crescent City Book 3 comes out in January. I think like January 3rd or something. That is going to be incredible. Full spoilers here, people. Um, at the end of Crescent City Book 2, she goes through a portal. Um, the main character in the Crescent City books. And she falls to the feet of a giant black throne. And a black winged fairy man stands up and <gasps> says... What are you doing in my night court? <gasps> I know. So we have a full Crescent City Akatar crossover. And I am fucking living for it. I've been waiting over a year for this. I didn't know about this, actually. Um, so <laughs> Crescent City, book three. If you need to read... I mean, you're not going to get it read by January. But uh, when you finish... So if you're wondering what you should read next, as far as in the SJM world... I would go into Crescent City after Akatar because there is going to be a crossover. Mm. Um, even though Throne of Glass, I forgot to mention it in my highlights of the year, I read all eight books of Throne of Glass succinctly. I don't know how many thousands of words it was. It took me over two weeks, and I read a lot. And it was the most beautiful, agonizing, traumatic experience of my life, and I thought it was fucking incredible. So that's high up there. But um, what am I looking forward to next year? Crescent City 3 um, and House of Dragon Season 2. And um, are we getting more of the animated Jedi show next year, I think? We are getting another season of Tales of the Jedi. Tales of really? the Jedi. There oh, you go. Those are my highlights. I'm so excited. <laughs> Which he just finished right before Ahsoka. Yeah. We watched it in one so city. Yeah. It's so wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. it yes. is. Yeah. 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 Um, as far as my highlights go, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Deadpool 3. Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The only Marvel movie coming out next the only year. only one. What the fuck? Yeah, and I don't... The only Marvel Cinematic Universe movie coming out next year. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the only ones that count anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're also getting Craven the Hunter and uh, Madam Web. I'm sure those will be, those are, those will be mm. movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for your review. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do have to Kitty's watch those looking shit. Forward to Madam Web. You should you should watch it with him. Who? Timmy. Yeah, Oz, uh, Oz, Oz already said he's very excited about yeah. it. He sent the trailer to me, and it's like, oh, this is this looks good. Yeah. And so I think that y'all should review that together. Because listen, it's he always funny when you two are like on the opposite he, opposite sides. There's yeah, no way sure. he really looked at that trailer and thought this looks good. No, he he really did. Oh, yeah. oh, for I thought you were. Told. I thought you were being facetious. Yeah, I thought you were. Told. No, <laughs> no, you. Oh, yeah, because I was. Guys. I was over here like, yeah, man. I was just like, yeah, dude. I really want to review that with Ace because I thought no, like maybe he, he's... Thought, he thought he thought it was gonna be good. Holy shit! Okay, wow. You know, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like a shitty '90s movie vibe to it, the trailer. I, I, I thought we burned all of that out of him. I guess we're gonna have to teach him this lesson again. Star Wars holiday I'm special. Sorry, yep. Timmy. Star Wars holiday special, my guy. You know, I, I thought Howard the Duck did it. I but, thought so. But I guess yeah, not. Yeah. I guess we're just going to have to keep on pushing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Mortal Kombat is my favorite movie for a reason. Wh- which one? The 90s oh, Mortal the very Kombat. The first one. Very first yes. one. Okay. Well, that's good because yeah. that's the best Mortal Kombat <laughs> By far. And, like, the one, that, the one that most recently came out is, I think, the worst Mortal Kombat movie. I, I liked it, but I like just about anything in the Mortal oh, Kombat gosh. verse. Yeah, the new I, one. I, I like Scorpion and Sub Zero a lot in those movies. In Agre- that, in that agreed. Movie. Scorpion mm-hmm. and Sub Zero were like I, I think I had everything else. Them. Yeah, everything else was. I even watched the sequel to the '90s Mortal Kombat. Annihilation. Kombat yeah. Oh. Yeah, and Johnny Cage it. is my favorite. They killed him like first five minutes, and I still <laughs> think it's better than the one they just uh, came out with. Uh, where they where they didn't put him in at all, and they just right. made up a fucking random character. Yeah, yeah, that was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, as far as highs go, though, um, I mean, yeah, there there's obviously a few different uh, comic book omnis I'm looking forward to. Uh, I hate to say it, but man, there's there's some more Spider Man books that I need to get. <laughs> uh, 
as much shit as I'll talk about Spider Man, I really like the character, but he, the, he's just so goddamn exposed. Um, as I say with the, the shit ton of Batman books as well, right? The, the overexposure. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot in terms of uh, in terms of video games. I'm, I'm a little hesitant, but kind of looking forward to Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Two. Yeah, yes, Rebirth. That's good. That's that's yeah. my top. That and uh, Hades Two. Yep, yeah. Hades Two. Uh, GTA Six does not come out until 2025. So, uh, and and not for me until much later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I think that yep. Wolverine and Blade are not due in 2024 either, so those video games will be later on. So, uh, yeah, a, a lot of next year is uh, TBD for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So the thing I'm most hyped for for next year is very easy. It's that would be Stormlight Five. Oh uh, God! Why did I not mention um, that? <laughs> uh, it is going to be called the Knights of Wind and Truth, and. Uh, I am looking forward to not only binging it, uh, but probably also it crushing my soul. Uh, because if any main character doesn't make it out, uh, that is going to fuck with me real bad. Mm. Uh, I swear to God, if he gets Kaladin, I'm going on strike. <laughs> but isn't death the happiest ending for Kaladin he could I, get? I was going to say, <laughs> that would seem like he's welcoming it. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I mean, obviously, like, um, I think... A, see, see. Uh, I, mind, I, that's its own podcast. It is its own podcast. <laughs> yeah. We could literally sit here and talk about Kaladin and Stormbreath for two hours. Um, but, yeah, I if Kaladin dies, that will be really, really bad for me. I think I could accept a Dalinar death because it's like he's had a full life and a full arc and... He's had his redemption. He's got kids. All the boxes are checked for a uh, honorable death. Whatever. Ha ha ha. ha. Intentionally honorable. honorable. <laughs> um, but uh, if he comes out of left field and kills like Adeline or something, I'm gonna freaking be so. Oh upset. yeah, that would be awful. Um, I would. Cr- oh, ugly cry. Yeah, or like um, and and the thing about if Kaladin dies, right? Then that means that Syl goes back into. Mm. Like nothingness, and uh, the thought of that is um, not good. Is not heartbreaking. Good. At is not not even the word for it. Um, super hyped for that. I'm hyped for rebirth, but mm-hmm. every time I see something on it, yeah, it it that nostalgia. Uh-huh. It just I know. It, it wraps me up, and it's all warm, and and I'm like, are you lies? And <laughs> and I don't care. I'm gonna play it anyway. Um. I have not played the Integrade yet, okay, but they have yeah. now where you can pre-order yeah, and, and, and you get Integrade for free, so I'm probably going to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, And that'll give me a little bit. I'm playing back through the remake now mm-hmm. so I can have the save data so I can get the bonus right. some, the bonus material. Um, Hades 2, uh, another video game. Uh, what else? Uh, movie wise, yeah, Deadpool three, obviously Dune Part two. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, incredibly hyped for that. And then um, TV shows wise, yeah, it's probably oh Invincible Part two. Yeah, Invincible yeah. Part two yeah. for sure. Season three of Bridgerton. I'm ready for um, Penelope's story. <laughs> um, season two of uh, um, dang, I just lost it. Of House of the Dragon, obviously. Oh yeah. yeah. Is Stranger Things next year? Yeah, or that's five? exactly what I was just gonna ask i we might get it at the tail end of next year they i know they just started shooting it like today yeah so and i the amount of vfx that goes into that i don't think we're gonna get it next year but um maybe so many things are up in the air because of the way all the strikes went so there's that new mad max movie coming out next year so here's the thing i Loathe the most recent Mad Max movie. I with Tom got, Hardy. I hate it to the point that so me and Kyle went to go see it together, and we're sitting there, and about twenty minutes into the movie, I'm like, I'm gonna whisper over to him and ask him if he wants to leave, and but I never did it right because I was just like, oh, fuck it, I'll just sit here. We already paid for the damn ticket. The movie gets over, and he was thinking the same thing the whole time. Like, like he was like, man, I wish I'd have just said something because it's one of the worst movies that I've ever seen. Like, I, I absolutely love that. Movie. I hate that movie with a passion. Like, I, I, I rewatched, like I watched Iron Man three again the other day, 
solely so I could come on this podcast and shit on it. <laughs> I would not watch that movie again for uh, any that's reason. That's so crazy. I would have to be paid a considerable amount of U.S. dollars. I, I would say, like, is, is it a Mad Max movie? No, it's a Furiosa movie, but... Yeah. It's, it's not a bad movie, though, I don't think. So when I heard that they were going to come out with this Furiosa movie, I was like... Well, you'll never get me to fucking see that. You got about the same odds of me going to watch a race Ray Palpatine movie. <laughs> and then they cast Anya Taylor Joy in mm-hmm. it. So now I gotta go see it. And yeah. Well, I will be seeing it because I enjoyed that next year yeah. you rode. I I hated it with, with a fiery passion. But I love Anya Taylor Joy, so I will go watch it because she's in it. It doesn't matter what it is. I I mean I watched uh what was um uh, New Mutants. Oh, yeah. yeah and she, she was, was the, yeah. by far the highlight of that. Yeah. So. But, yeah, hated. Hated. But uh, the cast looks amazing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I also don't like uh, the chick that played Furiosa in. I don't Charlize like her either. Theron? Yeah. yeah. Um, never liked her in anything ever. I'm yeah. not a big fan of hers either, man. And I think yeah. that we're in, uh, in shallow company with that. I think most people... Think she's over the moon. I, I'm just not a. Good I'm fan. like lukewarm on her. I've uh, seen yeah. stuff where I liked her. I've seen stuff where I didn't like her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The plot of that movie was a U-turn, but uh... it really was. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've been oh. here for almost four, almost four, about, hours. About four hours. You know what I mean? And no big deal. We all have yeah. to work in the morning, so uh, I get up at five. Ace, uh, Ace, what you got? Oh, that's was like, oh, that's that's early as shit. That's oh, okay, I, oh, I, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That makes me feel better because I I have a meeting at nine, and nine um, and five are very different. Babe. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I was like, dang, I was worried a minute ago, but no. Um, and then you're your own boss, so yeah, yeah. I am. Whoop whoop. Well, I'm <laughs> technically I'm getting up at five to go to the gym. So Ooh. oh, see, I should be doing that. Yeah, I have an eight-hour work day, but before I get to do that, I have to go to the gym, go to Sam's Club, go to Walmart, go to Kroger, drop off the Christmas gifts to Sophia's stable, um, get home and probably make them some lunch, and then clock in by 11.30, and then work till 8. So you have two days tomorrow and one day. That's that's my every day, but... (laughs) I, I have a very busy day tomorrow, too, but it doesn't start at 5 a.m. Yeah, I have a busy day tomorrow, but so, it doesn't start till 11. So. Yeah, so, um, mm, 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 mm. All right, well, I guess we need to get the hell out of here then. 2023, yeah. this has been Podcast Assemble. Wrap. Thanks for tuning in. We might have to split this into two episodes. I was just thinking the same thing. So, yeah, we um, might have to. Might have to put it out like that. But, yeah, uh, yeah thanks for joining us, and uh, we will be doing a lot more of these next year. Podcast Assemble! Podcast Assemble! Woo!